Three home. No, I'm gonna have to get out here. Guff yeah. out here. What days? Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, Monday, season. Uh, no, I'm not trying to. I need to come. Tuesdays. Come to tough. Last week at New Haven, we were just Tuesday not able to, to get relatively past the 10 yard line and just not being able to uh, to penetrate into the end zone. So I think that's the biggest thing for us tonight is just being able to get into the end zone and being able to have uh, have a good conversion rate in the red zone. And then defensively, I think, I mean, it's, I mean, from what it seems like, it's a stereotypical East Noble offense. It's a powerhouse. Uh, so you just kind of expect everything to be working for them on the ground through the air. And we just got to be able to shut it down, especially uh, Especially with this team being a state final or a state finalist team uh, a couple years ago in 2019, we uh, we got to find some answers. We definitely do, and uh, we're awaiting the arrival of both teams. All of Columbia City's lined up in their uh, tunnel down there, the Blow Up Eagle. For those of you who have not been here, and uh, dressed in the all black tonight, the old gold numerals, a little bit of maroon trim, and the Knights not far behind across the northeast side here. And we'll be ready for football here in a bit. We've got a good crowd on hand again. So uh, Columbia City again off a 21-0 loss at New Haven last week. Four turnovers for the Eagles. Not uh, good there. Uh, East Noble shut out down at Norwell, 17-0. Norwell, I believe, is uh, for real. So um, we'll see them in a couple <laughs> Look of Look at weeks. the modern term there for Coach Thompson, for real. <laughs> well, you know, they, they – they kind of retool once in a while down there, and they had a little hiccup last year or two, but they're uh, right back in it. And, they uh, had a really good linebacker, linebacker core last year. They had a really good core. And here come the Eagles. Coach Richmond with some food behind us. So the boys coming out to the uh, midfield, carrying the American flag. Getting riled up, stirred up, wound up, however you want to put it. No fireworks back there, too. Mr. Leach and his pyrotechnics. <laughs> I think he sets those off remotely. He's, he's the man. He's got all this Welcome bells and whistles. <laughs> Nick David and the East Noble Knights. East Noble coached by Luke Amstutz. So the Knights make their appearance, coached by Luke Amstutz. And Brett Fox, his counterpart on our side. Coach Fox in his uh, eighth season here. Lewis Fuller. And I can't get uh, whatever I want to come up on the uh, phone, so uh, we'll just be at living. Does your phone work? Mine doesn't even Technical do. issues for Coach Thompson. Well, it doesn't do diddly poo up here. It just kind of frazzles. I don't know if it's the school internet or what's going on. But uh, uh, anyway, I'll let you find John Harrell's website. I can't get it get it on. But uh, So Columbia City and East Noble, glad you're with us on WJHS. Plethora of underwriters tonight. Morris's Builders Mart, Bart's Car Store, Mike and Sons Satellite and TV Services, uh, Indiana Physical Therapy, uh, Flotech Plumbing and Heating, uh, ProFed Credit Union, Moo Over Ice Cream. And that looks like the extent of it, but thanks to all of them for bringing you this broadcast and everybody uh, for listening to WJHS in its 35th year. Amazingly, they take the balloon down and the captains meet at midfield, East Noble won the toss, apparently, what I'm hearing in the background. Legendary voice of uh, Fred Enninger in the house tonight for the Hawk in Kendallville. you probably hear him. He gets a little, uh, a little excited. Well, so do you, Coach. <laughs> Mr. Potts out there. Columbia City alum here. Right in front of the um, press box uh, top row. So East Noble wins the uh, toss, and they're going to receive. Bolt and Roland Zolman uh, exchange hugs there. A couple of the veterans for these two squads. Zolman, a 6'5 senior, 210 pounds. And, of course, Greg Bolt, uh, quarterback, 6'5", 220. There's a lot of beef there between those two guys. Yeah, two really big size quarterbacks. Could you imagine being 6'4", 6'5", and uh, 225, 230? It just doesn't seem um, possible, you know. <laughs> Genetics helps with that, too. Well, true, so. but a uh, couple of big guys there, and uh, we'll probably see uh, a lot out of both of them. Don't have the officials' names, but um, 
We'll see where we go with this one. It's going to be uh, interesting. Both teams shut out next week, so you know something's going to give there. And hopefully most of you listening to this are Columbia City uh, fans, so we hope it's uh, in favor of the maroon and gold. But no easy task, that's for sure. Yeah, especially against a East Noble, East Noble team that that we haven't beat since what what year did you, did you say? Two thousand eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Well, it, it it becomes where you know, you know, and you get throw in, a, you know, three four sectional uh, defeats at their hands. You know, it kind of gets a little bit you know in your head a little bit, and I think. And, uh, and there we see Mr. Glazen, one of the uh, video crew students down there on the. Uh, Start the game. Track. Munson and Nichols back to receive the opening kickoff from Garrett Kleffiger. He will punt towards the north end zone. And the wind is calm. The flag is limp over there. Game time temperature about 80 degrees, I believe. It's been a good golf night, Mr. Bledsoe. <laughs> it has most certainly been. Oh, I like know my copy was out at Eagle Glen playing golf earlier. My copy's always out there. <laughs> So Kleffiger puts it in the air, a little pooch. It's going to come down about the 30, and East Noble fell on it. For a minute there, they didn't, nobody really wanted it. Christian recovered. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously with a little bit of a pooch kick there, I mean, none of the East Noble guys really want to fall on it because they're afraid of it just bobbling out. So, uh, so yeah, a little bit of trickery coming out of the playbook there for, for Coach Fox to start. Well, a lot of times you don't uh, those those up men in the form in the uh, special teams unit. They're not used to, you know, having the ball come their way. It's usually flying over their head, and they're focused on blocking. But <laughs> would have been nice if we could have snagged that. But uh, so they get it at the 30, reasonable field position. And Brazel, the quarterback, a sophomore, six foot 185. He's got a couple of receivers. He's in the shotgun. And he hands off to uh, Nichols. Nichols around left side. Eagles stifle that at the line of scrimmage. Martin Smith there on the tackle there for the Eagles. We called his name oh. quite a bit last week, Coach. And I would expect the same thing coming from this week. Uh, just, I mean, he's a hardworking kid, and he's uh, not he's not afraid to hit someone, that's for sure. He was a bright spot uh, the other night. He was all over he you. He was. Right. So uh, hurry up offense, second and ten. Brazel in the shotgun for the Knights, dressed in the road whites, the royal blue and yellow of the uh, Knights. And shifting a couple people there, and they come left side and through a hole and out uh, dragging the pile is Carrico. Ryan Elston was at the bottom of that pile. Carrico, the ball carrier. One of Columbia City's Finest seniors this year, I would say, as he, he has been leading this team quite well. I know Coach Fox has mentioned it in a couple of postgame interviews. He's a, he's a senior leader for sure, especially for this Eagles defense. So Braz on the shotgun once again. They shift those two players again to the other side, and they hand off this time to Carrico again, and the Eagles stop him. Elston gets him short of the first down. Seniors making big plays when you need them to, that's for sure. So what will Coach Luke Amstutz select to do? It's fourth and a long one. Fourth and a long one, no long, almost a long, just about two. Two, yeah, and he's keeping his offense on the field. Brazel's gonna be in the gun here. So Brazel, with a couple of receivers to that far side. They're gonna try to draw us off sides, perhaps. Two minutes gone in the ball game, no score. And they pitch it wide, and it's Carrico. First down, East Nobles. He gets four yards, perhaps. So nice pitch play there, and uh, no problem on the first down. First, yeah, first down. they had some really good blocking there. They're, the left part of the line was able to shift there with the running back and just being able to, I mean, all, the, all they have to do is provide a two-yard barrier. That's all they got to do. Okay, well, here's uh, Brazel once again, first and 10 at the East Noble 42. Nice fake, misdirection, and Nichols takes around left side, doesn't get much done. <coughs> so the Eagles, couple stops right at the line of scrimmage. <coughs> yeah, defensive line has been improving, definitely an improvement from last week. Uh, I mean, it does seem like East Noble is a bit of a slower running team, but still, that defensive line is doing their job, and they're, they're slowing down that run game for East Noble. 
Second and 10, ball at East Noble 42. Brazel fakes, Brazel has a man wide open, caught. First down and then some, out of bounds is uh, Christian. That's gonna be a huge gain. Brock O'Hare there on the tackle for the Eagles. Down to the 42. So 142 to the other 42. That looks like 20 yards to me. So East Noble, a lot of teams going to the hurry up and East Noble, no exception. So Brazel once again with 255 gone in this one. No score, East Noble in Columbia City. And they pitch wide, here's Carrico and Eagles. Oh, and he slipped a tackle and got another yard or two. So Carrico picks up three. Josh Arntz there with the tackle. He's another one that's all over the field. We call his name a lot. Yeah, we have both, I mean, I, on both sides of the ball, really. I mean, he's been a key component of the run game as well as on the defensive side of the ball. So second and seven at the Columbia City 39 for East Nobles. They move it to the south goal here at the uh, stadium. They keep shifting those two players every time. And they pitch it wide. Brazel's going to keep it. And he gets hammered. Don't overdo it, guys. All right, there's a loss. Loss of seven on the play. Good pursuit by the Eagles. Stratton Fuller there on the tackle. He's one of our return men, making a big play on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, and he's he's the, not exactly a huge guy out there, but he may. No, he's he's not the biggest guy by any means. I mean, he he's five foot nine, one fifty, but uh, dragged down Brazel pretty easily there. Third and twelve for the night. Seven fifty-five to go in a scoreless first. Brazel looking to the sidelines to uh, change the play. Ten on the play clock. Brazel's got uh, his instructions. Gets the play off. He's going to keep it. Quarterback draw, and there's a flag on the play, and they shut Brazel down at the line of scrimmage. Let's see, that was Brody Barker there on the tackle. Illegal shift. Sideline warning. Okay. Sideline warning. Looked like a like an illegal shift signal, but at any rate. Going to need a get back coach there on East Noble's sideline. Yep. Fourth down. We're going to go for it. Ten yards to go for the Knights. Third down, ten. Fourth down, ten. Fourth down, long ten. Brazel in the shotgun. And they're going to change the play. Columbia City almost jumped off sides there. Brazel with time and pass tipped. Incomplete. That was great defense by Ryan Elston there. I mean, he, he came up from his linebacker position. He timed that perfectly. I mean, right when that... Right when that ball was snapped, he was pretty much even with the line of scrimmage, and he was in Brazel's face almost immediately. Well, the Eagles have got some pressure. New coach Vincent chiming in tonight. Must be uh, must be hard up. Of course, his wife's Columbia City alum, so maybe that's why he's listening. <laughs> and a classmate of mine. So Columbia City takes over on downs, their first offensive foray. 7.31 to go in the first. No score. Bolt up under center and hands off and Arntz into the pile. And Arntz is going to get a strong five, I think. Looks like it. That's yeah, about a five-yard pickup, yeah. Now to the Eagle 46. And they're going to go with the hurry up here. So Bolt back up under center. Bolt hands off and tripped up easily, and they got him behind. As James gets there on the carry. He gets a yard. They move the sticks anyway. Eagles have gone with the full house backfield for the first three plays here. You don't see this very often out of the Eagles. So Bolt, hands wide, and here's Seavers, and it's good morning, good afternoon, and good night. A loss of one as he had nowhere to go. Yeah, it wasn't really good blocking there on the by, by the uh, right part of the offensive line. Looked like the right guard and the right tackle just, uh, just left a bit of a gap there, and that's, that's what Gave East Noble the ability to tackle tackle Seavers there almost immediately at the line of scrimmage. So fourth down five, Columbia City shifts some personnel and they look like they're gonna go for it. And got one receiver out here who is Heron, bowled up under center. Gets goes in motion. And they're gonna change the play and probably call timeout. 
Timeout, Columbia City. So, Sean has underwriters. Tonight's game feed is brought to you by Morse's Builders Mart, located at 516 East Van Buren Street in Columbia City, with locations in Huntington, Wabash, Warsaw, and Goshen. Online at morse'sbuildersmart.com, serving northeastern Indiana since 1871. This broadcast is also brought to you by Bart's Car Store, selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. Bart's Car Store offers <coughs> test drives, cash for trade-ins, and financing options. Bart's Car Store, serving Columbia City, Whitley County, and Fort Wayne. And then finally, WGHS Radio is brought to you by Mark and Mike and Sons Satellite and TV Services. Mike and Sons is, author, is an authorized Dish Network and Direct TV provider and is now offering an 8-bay antenna TV hookups from Channel Master. That's up to 40 local channels from South Bend all the way to Fort Wayne. That sounds like a highfalutin TV outfit. <laughs> Some more channels than I get, I guess. Well, all right, so here we go. We bring the punting unit on now to the timeout. So Klefker stands about his... 33 months and back. Kleficker, plenty of time. Nice high end over in. Going to be uh, going to bounce. Uh, it's going to take an East Noble bounce a little bit. The Eagles down it at the 22. 23 somewhere. Take your pick. So halfway through the first, no score. And both teams have had an offensive set. Eagles did not get a first down. No, did not get a first down. And I think part of that or at least the majority of that was just because of the offensive line, just kind of a lack of blocking, just being able to let deep East Noble's defensive line just penetrate right through and make an easy tackle. So I think that's uh, that's probably going to be one of the key components here for Columbus City tonight is just being, being able to make sure that that offensive line holds strong so that Bolt can have enough time to make the handoff or to throw or for the running backs to turn the corner. So here come the Knights for their second offensive set. <clears throat> As Zolman comes to the near side as a receiver. And Brazel back in the shotgun. Brazel waits the snap. And he hands to Carrico. And Eagles stifle that. Line of scrimmage, if that. Yeah, it looked like Brody Barker and Ryan Elston there are in on the tackle. So second and nine are going to call it officially. Well, second and ten, whatever the case, take your pick. And call it 10, ball at their own 23, so no gain. 5.28 to go in the scoreless first, East Noble and Columbia City, Northeast State action. Both teams shut out last week, both on the road, and here it comes. Oh, and they slipped tackles. They lost the football. Columbia City says they have it. Columbia City football. Somebody's. Stratton Fuller there at the bottom of the pile. Somebody stripped it from Carrico from behind. And then Fuller just fell on it. Carrico was starting to, you know, slip a couple tackles. He could have been. He could have been gone if he would have, if he would have, I mean, if he got past that one tackle mm -hmm. around the 35, he only had one defender to beat. Yeah. So a fumble for East Noble. As Carrico gets stripped, Columbia City recovers. Bolt back to work. First and 10 at the East Noble 33. So great field position, the full house backfield. And coming to the left side, Getz. Getz finds a little bit of a hole, and he's going to get across the 30 to the 27, it looks like. Dragged down by Rowan Zolman, one of the seniors for East Noble, 6'5", 210. Another big boy. He is a big boy. And I mean, if you compare his size to, to James Getz, it's, yeah. it's a significant size difference there. Bolt under center, hands this time to Arts, and Arts near the first down, short on second and five. Third down one. That seems like it's going to be something manageable for the Eagles, especially with Bolt's patented quarterback sneak. So Bolt up under center, that full house backfield. Bolt takes it ahead, first down and in some, and the pile pushes him from behind. <laughs> I think our own guy just kind of gave him a shot in the back. <laughs> so it's about, uh, what, four on the play. Ball at the 24, first and 10 for the Maroon and Gold. They roll the clock with 4.24 to go and a scoreless first. East Snow and Columbia City, lots of tailgaters down there tonight. And yet again, going with the full house backfield. I don't think we've strayed away from that yet this game. No. And Peyton Shear, the lone receiver to the far side. 
And here comes Gats. Gats looking for the corner. He's got it, 15, down near the 10, and he's tackled by Zolman. Great block in there by, by the Eagles offensive line. That was the sole reason as to why Getz was able to turn the corner. They bought him enough time and once he got to just outside that left hash, he had all day right in front of him. Second and two at the East Noble 11 and Getz again, gets into the pile and he's gonna get ahead. We got a flag over on the far side. It's on East Noble. Yep. 12 men on the field. Yeah, that's what I just heard. So that's going to be first down. Five yard penalty moves the ball to just outside, just outside the five yard line. Eagles in prime position here. 341 See, to go. This is where we have to take advantage of things. We've gotten this far. We have to punch into the end zone. This is what we were not able to do last week. Seavers to the goal line. He's short. Just short. And if I'm Coach Fox, I'd most likely put the ball in Bolt's hands and just let him punch through. Yep, here he goes. Up under center. Bolt takes it in, and he's touchdown, Columbia City. Bolt on the sneak. Six nothing. They rub the home team. Bolt from a yard out. Well, you, you hit the nail on the head, Sean. You said we had to take advantage, and we did. Yeah, that's, I mean, we we kind of got nailed last week based on I mean our turnovers, and, and uh, New Haven was really just able to take care of take care of the football and score. So good to see that we're able to force a turnover and uh, be able to score off of it. And the set and the kick by Kleficker is good. Out of the hold of Piper. And your score, Eagles 7, Knights 0. WJHS is brought to you in part by Indiana Physical Therapy, offering the highest credentialed therapist in the area, treating all walks of life from peewees to professionals to Olympians. With 18 locations in northern Indiana, including Fort Wayne, Angola, Auburn, Bluffton, Decatur, Elkhart, Goshen, Huntington, New Haven, and Warsaw. Indiana, Indiana Physical Therapy is next to Oriental Buffet in Columbia City. Indiana Physical Therapy online at indianapt.com. Tonight's microphones are from the support of Flowtech Plumbing and Heating. Serving locally for 30 years now, not 29, Coach. Yep. Off, they offer furnace tune-ups and complete repair. More information is available at flowtechpnh.com. Thanks to those underwriters. Thanks, everyone, for listening to WJHS Columbia City Athletics. For the 35th year, Andrew Thompson and Sean Bledsoe here at the stadium. I guess I just got to call this place the stadium. So. <laughs> the stadium. Well, I, <laughs> we, we have no name for we it. We don't really so. need it. Everything's not, I mean, it's new. It's broken in, so we'll, we don't want to call it the new stadium necessarily. But, uh, ooh, was there fireworks went off over there? Yeah, I, I must think have we sets it. them off just for the touchdown. Some smog over there, smoke. <laughs> So here we go. The crowd fired up. Student section really full again tonight. Must be safety vest night. Yeah, neon. It's, neon, it's neon night, yeah. Neon nation, I guess they call that. 7 nothing. Eagles and the referee. What are we waiting on here? They keep talking to our bench about something. Oh, <laughs> Official wanted the music off. It does get a little loud out there. <laughs> oh, here's a pooch. And, oh, they fumble it, but they get it back at the 19. So Columbia City employing the pooch kick again, Sean. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think Coach Fox is, like you said earlier, he's just trying to take, uh, just trying to take advantage of the of the upman. I mean, obviously, like you said, they're just used to that ball going straight over their head, and they, don't, you know, all they have to do is worry about blocking. But now, with Kleffker giving that little pooch kick down to the sideline, I mean, they have no, I mean, they they got no uh, no other thing to do but but touch the ball pretty much. Yeah, they evidently have a dangerous return, man, I would imagine. I don't know which uh, player it is. But, but you would think that Kleffiger's got the leg to put it through the back of the end zone so that they don't have to worry about that. True. But it's obviously some sort of strategy behind it. So we'll see what the Eagle defense does again. The Snowball lines up with uh, Brazel. And in motion goes Munson. Brazel hands off and tripped up is... Nichols, the ball carrier. Tackle there by Josh Arntz. 
going to be what a gain of four. Looks like second down six. Three minutes straight up to go. Seven to nothing. Columbia City over East Noble. Second down. So three receivers come out. We haven't seen this uh, set here. So Brazel, hands off and up through the middle and near the first down is going to be Nichols. You got Uhair there on the tackle there for the Eagles. Down by Josh Arns of the Eagles. And Josh Arns as well. First down. Yeah, they're giving it to him, yep. As he got to the 29. So this time we're getting Nichols instead of Carrico. So here comes this. Uh, here comes the set with three receivers again. Munson in the backfield, or check that Nichols in the backfield with uh, quarterback Brazel. Brazel takes it, hands to Nichols. Nichols plows into the pile and he drags the pile for eight or nine yards. Looks like tackle there by Ryan Elston and Brody Barker. So several Eagles in there, and it's a second and two. They mark him at the 38. Second down, two, 205 to go in the first seven of Columbia City. So Brazel looking to the sidelines again, a sophomore quarterback. Looks very poised out there. Brazel still waits. He has the snap, looking to throw. Eagles get some heat on him, he hurls it deep, look out! Oh, nice catch! Down at the 20-yard line. Tackled by Hunter Heron there, but still, there is not much you can do with that. That is a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Hunter Heron. You know, I mean, not to pick on Hunter, but you know, he's he had he's not over six foot, and with that receiver being well over six foot, I think. He, see, that was that was Rowan Zoman there. He's six yep. five two ten. So, so that's a that's a huge size difference there. 42-yard completion there, set up first and 10 at the Columbia City 20 with a minute 33 as the clock rolls here. So big play for East Noble. And they're going to give it to Nichols. Nichols into the pile for maybe a couple. It looked like Brody Barker there on the tackle for the Eagles, able to trip him up right at the line. Only, only allow a gain of one. Second nine. Or eight, take your pick. It's kind of in the ballpark. So Brazel has the play from the sidelines. One minute to go in the first. Brazel, shotgun, hands off to Nichols. Nichols, big hole, subs a tackle, touchdown East Noble. As he sliced and diced right through the Columbia City uh, line there and then uh, everybody else. Yeah, it was just, it was great blocking there by East Noble's offensive line. And uh, just created that big hole, and then once he got through the line, he had absolutely nobody to try to to try to slip a tackle. I mean, he he had a wide open field. So Nichols has East Noble on the board from 11 yards out, and the kicker appears to be Biddle. I'm not sure on that number. Uh, Munson will hold. Zolman will hold. Check that. So extra point coming, snap, set, kick, blocked by the Eagles. Can't, uh, can't return it in high school. I wonder who got the block. I, I, all I know is that Stratton Fuller got, got the ball. Well, hey, we'll take it, seven to six. Great special block. Yeah, great special teams play there for the Eagles. That's something that that we're not used to seeing, really, is a, is a blocked field goal or a blocked no, punt. No, we don't see it very often. That's for sure. So at the 10:09 mark, check that 11:09 mark. They are on the board, the Knights, and it's seven to six. PAT blocked by somebody in a black jersey tonight. So the Eagles with the lead. Oh, a beautiful night for football. Eagles back on the road next week to Leo to take on the uh, high octane offense uh, under coach Jared Souter. They've been romping all over everybody. They 40 32 over East Noble, although East Noble came back late. That was a little bit more of a differential with the exception of a late comeback. Nick Klein is the kicker for okay. you there, coach. Klein. All right, good He's job. Junior. So Klein to uh, put it in play. He's got the signal. Seven to six, Columbia City over East Noble, and it's 
It's going to be deep and fielded at the five. And here comes the reverse handoff. It's going to be Getz. Getz uh, gets around a man, 15. He cuts up field, 25, 30, 30, 35, 40. Knocked out of bounds near midfield, James Getz. Yeah, what a, what a great play there. Great design by Coach Fox. I mean, obviously he's got, he's got some two, he got, he has two great return men with Fuller and with Getz. And uh, I mean, just faking the handoff there. I mean, Getz received that and uh, mm -hmm. it looked like he was gonna fake it to Fuller and Fuller was gonna reverse the field and go up the right sideline. But no, Getz kept it, completely faked out East Noble's, East Noble's uh, special teams unit there and uh, got us great field position. First to 10 at their own 49th the Eagles. Hold your card, we got a false start on the Eagles. So first and 15. A bit too much adrenaline there, I think, Coach. Yep. So that'll take us back five to the 44 yard line. 38 seconds to go in the first. Seven to six, Columbia City. And what has been a quick quarter. So we're not even at the bottom of the hour yet. Ooh, Wyatt Warner back there. He's still helping out even after he graduates. What a guy. And a hand to Getz. Getz cuts up field into the pile. He's going to get four, maybe three. He's out to the 48, so gain of four. Second and 11. That should do it for the first quarter unless we elect to run a play. Looks like we're going to. Yeah. Looks like we're going to go with the uh, full house backfield yet again. So Bolt surveying the situation sends Peyton Shear out to the far side down to seven seconds. Bolt back to pass. Looking deep, going for the home run ball to Shear. And there's incomplete. Yeah, incomplete. No flag on the play. Zolman, the defender, no, it was uh, somebody. I can't get that number over there, but uh, good defense. Good throw, good D there, and uh, that is the end of one quarter. And we have a seven to six score in favor of Columbia City over East Noble. Tonight's game stream, is, game stream is brought to you in part by ProFed Credit Union, providing our community with modern banking services with individual attention for personal accounts and businesses alike. ProFed Credit Union specializes in savings for goals, mortgages, car loans, and business banking too. ProFed Credit Union serves northern Indiana with a network of 37,000 ATMs and 12 branch locations, now in Columbia City, just off of US 30 near Walmart. Tonight's game score updates on WJHS are brought to you by Moo Over Ice Cream Shop. Building flavors from scratch, Moo Over offers ice cream flavors including Sunday chocolate nut free, strawberry jam, rocky road, and custom candied pecan. Moo Over also offers a variety of family sundaes, soft serves, shakes, tumbleweeds, and gluten free desserts that accompany ice cream. Moo Over is a plant based ice cream shop. Shop tailored toward the, towards those who either have a sensitivity to dairy, allergens, or are taking a more approach a more healthy approach to eating. That's a, that's a, it's a hard one to read. It's a mouthful, mouthful coach. That is, that is a lot. Third and 11 for the Eagles. We switch into the field and uh, ball at the 48. Bolt coming to the near side, looking to throw. Gets hit as he throws. Oh, the throws his man incomplete. So that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, I mean, it was great defense by uh, who was that pressuring Bolt? Trevor Conley. One of uh, East Noble's juniors standing at six foot two, two oh five. So uh, Bolt's probably not used to that uh, that tall of a figure coming after him. So uh, so completely understandable as to why he may have overthrown his man there. True. So four seconds gone on the second. Kleffiger to kick and the return man. Uh, why are numbers so hard to read out there? <laughs> If we had binoculars, it would make things well, a lot easier. Well, I keep easier. forgetting those. Nice kick by Kleffiger. Fair catch at the 10. Munson, the returnee. Munson, yeah, five. So they've got it first and 10 at their own 10 with 10 seconds going here in the second. Seven to six, Columbia City. Yeah, you're not wrong. East Noble's, East Noble's numbers on their shoulder pads are just really tough to read. Feel like at least with Columbia City we have a chance to read them <laughs> with, yeah. with because of the fact that they're gold. Gold on black is uh, pretty uh, vision oriented. So okay, the Columbia City defense big opportunity here. They're pinned deep. See if we can make something happen on D. 
So Brazel comes. Brazel in the shotgun once again. He's got three receivers from which to choose. He hands off and, oh, slipping a couple tackles. Holy smokes, and out for an eight-yard gain. I think Martin Smith was on the bottom of that pile for the Eagles. Is that, is that Nichols? Uh, I believe it was. Yes, it yep. was Nichols. Second and two. As he drug a couple uh, Columbia City defenders. So second and two, ball at the night 18, just underway in the second. Blazel with time, going to throw, lobs it up. Incomplete. Heron on the coverage. Zolman, the intended receiver. Yeah, Zolman is, uh, he's a big boy for sure, and that's going to be a matchup that I think we're going to have to watch throughout throughout the night and see how that kind of, how that matchup develops. I mean, Hunter Heron obviously being a bit undersized, but he can still, yep. he can still find a way to uh, to, to defend Zolman and, and, you know, cause some frustration there for East Noble's offense. Tall task. So Brazel in the shotgun again, and they hand off, and that's Nichols, Nichols. Blows through a couple Columbia City tacklers and gets it out to the 25. Gain of six, first down at the 25. Look like Brock O'Hare and Cole Mosier there with the tackle. Okay, so they get the chain set. First and 10 at their own 25 for the Knights as they move it north here on the uh, field. Brazel. It looks like they're going to change the play up here. Looks to the sidelines. And Brazel pitches it wide, and there's a flag on the play, and the Eagles eat that up. Although he did drag ahead for a couple. He was nearly tackled by his own man. <laughs> he nearly had one of uh, East Noble's offensive line. One of the members of that offensive line nearly tackle him. Holding on the Knights. Holding on the Knights. So the tackle for Columbia City. That here, eight, let's see, I'm not sure whose name I heard. AJ Spencer. So first and holding, the Eagles gonna back him up. The 13 yard line. 13 yard line. Pretty much back where East Noble started. First down marker yep. all the way at the 35. So they got a ways to go. First down and 22. They got three receivers on that far side. And Brazel in the shotgun, hands off, and they, they got him finally as he's not much of a gain. Number 59, Easton Carnahan. Carnahan, yeah. So that's going to be second and 22. Long ways to go for this East Noble offense, but with with that deep pass that they threw to uh, to uh, Zolman, they yep. they've proven that they can pick up chunks of yardage at a very quick rate. 9.48 to go in the second, 7-6 Columbia City, Brazel back to throw, kind of a wobbler, incomplete, oh, they're gonna throw that flag. That was on Heron there, Heron with the coverage and. So, there's the flag, Zolman the intended receiver again. Yeah, they were, they were hand fighting all the way up to about the 40, just past the first down line and it's uh, probably what, what did it. So that'll be 15 yards. So this could be a much more manageable third down. It's going to be third and seven, I believe. If I can do math correctly. I'm sure you can. <laughs> um, they're just trying to get the ball. There they go. So we'll uh, see where they mark it off from. So up to the 28. And going to be third down seven. Okay, so much more manageable situation for the Knights. And the Eagles 
See if they can stifle this. And it looks like Nichols will take a break from being in the backfield. So we'll see what they do here. Brazel, hands off. And Eagles take care of it. Lost with a couple, I believe. Uh, who was that? Was that Caden Ward there at the tackle? I believe so. Third down, sorry, it wasn't. I had it fourth down, but it is third down. So third and seven. They have a receiver each way. Brazel in the shotgun. Seven to six Eagles, 9.15 to go in the second. As they look to the sidelines to get a different play. Play clock down to 10. Brazel with plenty of time. Brazel throws, overthrows his man, incomplete. Fourth and seven. Brazel had a little heat on him, I believe, back there. Yeah, he did. He had some pressure coming for him, so he had to get that ball out quickly. And when you have to get, and when you have to get the ball out that quick, things can go wrong relatively quickly. And uh, you saw that there with him overthrowing his man by. Yeah, I mean that was probably at least it's saw three or four feet above his intended receiver's head. Not sure who got the pressure on him from the Eagles, but somebody was back there to uh, cause issues. So Fuller and Getz back to receive the kick about their 30. Klein to punt, and it's a high one. Oh, and Getz catches it and hit immediately. Maybe got a yard there. He may have made a forward step. Yeah, maybe. I wasn't sure if he if he tried to call for a fair catch or not, but yeah, he. Boy, that looked a little risky. He had uh, guys he, right in there. He had three East Noble defenders, one on his left, one just in front of him, and one just to his right. And if he dropped that, East Noble's got great field position. But thankfully, he held on to the ball. All right, so here comes the Eagle offense. Here comes the Eagle offense again. Leading by a point. 7-6 to six over East Noble. 8-5-4 to go in the second. Full house backfield for the Eagles, and they hand it to Getz. Getz looking for an alley spin move. And this time he gets stifled. Holy smokes, pursuit by East Noble was excellent there. Yeah, Trevor Conley with the tackle there, the six foot two, 205 junior. It's just not, not the type of blocking that we needed there for that play. Need to make sure that that left part of the offensive line holds strong so that Getz can turn that corner. Second and 12. So bolt up under center, different form. This is a usual formation. Bolt's going to keep. He spins into traffic and drags the pile for three yards out across uh, the original line of scrimmage. And it's going to be what? At the 38-yard line? So third down nine. Third down nine for Columbia City. Hit the eight-minute mark to go in the half. So Getz comes out on a receive, receiving position. Bolt looking, throws against the green, caught! First down! And Stratton Fuller there on the reception for the Eagles. To the 48, 49. A little toe tap there from, from Fuller too to make sure that he was in, a little Tony toe tap. Smooth as silk. 12 yard pickup, he went right to the chains where he needed to go and did a little curl and Pretty much undefendable. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it, it, he just created, he creates separation really well. First and 10 at the Eagle 49, and nothing doing there as uh, Severs gets plastered. They're going to give him the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Are they going to? They are going to put it at midfield. Nope. Yep, they're going to put it at midfield. They gave him a yard. Second and nine, hard earned yard. So he got lambasted quickly. <laughs> lambasted. So Bolt, here comes, uh, gets into the pile, and he gets hammered after maybe a, a yard. Yeah, Trace Holiday on the tackle there for East Noble. Back-to-back -back tackles right at the line of scrimmage pretty much. Third and eight. Eagles could use a big play here. Just to give you perspective, Holiday is six foot two, 215 pounds, coach. Wow. That's a big D line. It's been a traditional East Noble name over the years. Fred Inning are having fun with our game night staff, the legendary voice of East Noble Athletics. And Bolt, the throw, he's gone to the far side and he's gonna have to get rid of it and throws it up. And Shear almost, uh, he did get a hand on it. That was just kind of a wing and a prayer. 
Yeah, and, but and not to mention one of the toughest throws that that Bolt can make. I mean, he's running to the far sideline and throwing to the far sideline, and that's just that's a tough throw to make, and especially when you're under duress. You got two or three East Noble defenders coming after you, and he got hit too in the process, and it was a wobbly pass, and definitely for for sure was worrying about an interception. So 6.23 to go, fourth and eight. Cleffiger on to kick for Columbia City. Ooh, a little bit of a high snap, he gets it off. Pretty good kick, and it's gonna ooh, take an East Noble bounce. And he was gonna down it somewhere. Mark of the 20. Now well, they're gonna bring it forward here where it was first touched. So they're gonna put it, what, about 26? Yeah, it looks like about the 26 to the 27 yard line for when it was first touched. So the referee makes the signal. So at the 28, East Noble trailing seven to six to Columbia City. Goes back to work on offense. There's a good crowd uh, across the way for the visitors. It's kind of almost full over there on the far side. Can't expect that with an East Noble crowd though. Yep. So two receivers for East Noble out to that far side. And Brazel takes the snap and a reverse and Nichols. And a couple on the play. Yeah, he just ran into a sea of black jerseys. Second down eight. Halfway mark of the second quarter. It looks like Brady Barker got that tackle for the Eagles. 5.55 to go. In the half, seven to six, Columbia City over East Noble. And Brazel again, and fakes, and here comes a little misdirection, and Eagles eat that up. The line of scrimmage, no gain. Yeah, that defensive line for the Eagles, when, when that ball has been anywhere between the two hashes, it just, it's been great to see the, uh, the Eagle defense being able to shut that down. Third and eight, 520 now to go as the clock runs. And Brazel with a couple of receivers this way and one to the far side and Eagles jump off side. And let's see, that was Jackson Moore there jumping, jumping off sides. So that's gonna be third down three. So encroachment on the Eagles. Down. Two and a half yards to go for first so down. third and two, two and a half, take your pick. Under five for the second. And Brazel in the shotgun, little bubble screen. That's gonna be first down and in some. Look out, out across the 40 to the 44. It's the first time that we've really seen uh, Nichols in the open field. He can turn on the Jets. Yes, he can. So that moves the sticks. So first and 10 Knights at their own 43. Brazel. And they're gonna look to the sidelines and change the play. Most teams do that anymore. They line up and then look to change. So Brazel, hands off. And it's gonna be about three yards, Nichols. 47-yard line. Josh Arnts there with the tackle for the Eagles. Second down, seven. Four ten to go in the half. Seven to six, Columbia City over the East Noble Knights. Columbia City looking for their first win over the Knights since 2011. And Brazel takes the snap. And whoa, they got some heat on him, and that pass incomplete. Yeah, great defense there by Martin Smith. I mean, he was he penetrated in the face of Brazel almost immediately. Nice job not to overdo it on the tackle. Yeah, he very, pulled, very he true. Up. Very true. He, I mean, it, it, he knew or he saw Brazel being being ready to about to throw, and he made the adjustment from going into tackle mode to blocking mode. He he was not about to 
to have another penalty. Big move there, because he could have, he was, his momentum was carrying him into a move where he could uh, let him have it. And Brazel throws the sidelines easy. Oh, they brobble it, incomplete. Is that was gonna be a first down. Yeah, the intended receiver was Nick Munson, and uh, he, he had that ball square in his face. It's just, he turned, like, I mean, right, I mean, before that ball even got to his hands, he turned, he, he I mean, he was ready to, to turn up field, but uh, a bit premature there with his movements and uh, ended up in a drop pass. So fourth and seven, Munson to kick. A little bit of a low snap, high kick. Fuller calls for a fair catch. Well, and he lost it. Got it back. Holy Toledo. That's that's the one worry that you have with a with a high tumbling punt. I mean, it's just getting under it, and especially with a bit of wind. I mean, we don't have that tonight, but no. still, just the orientation of the ball can can throw you off just a bit. And with the height of it, the the timing is a bit weird. I mean, obviously, as a as a return man in, in high school football, you, you don't really get high turning end over end punts that often and uh, just not something I, I don't think our boys have seen in a bit. That uh, that was almost above the light standards. I, <laughs> well, it was up there. You're it, right. it was very high. It could have got up there in a the, little bit of darkness. So here goes Columbia City. Gats gets tripped up after a couple. Tackled there by Nolan Rhodes, another one of East Noble seniors. So second down eight. So the Eagles. At their own 21, leading by a point, looking to go downfield. And here comes a big gun and broken. 40, 45, midfield, and Ethan Seavers out of bounds at the 49 of East Noble. Wow, what a what a run by Ethan Seavers there for the Eagles. I mean, he just got open field, turned on the Jets. I mean, great blocking by that Eagles offensive line once again. Once we can get our guys to turn that corner, get outside the hashes, it's uh, it's going to be a big play. And here we go again. And Seavers gets a chunk more. Down to the 41. Is that other one? What about 34-yard pickup? Seavers uh, hasn't carried that much yet tonight, but he's got two big ones there. He hasn't carried much in a couple no. weeks from what it seems like. Second two, and Seavers again. Seavers gets uh, near the first down. The yep. And they'll give it to him, yeah. Damon yep. Bentley there on the tackle there for the Knights. So at the East Noble 38, 235 to go, and they'll roll the clock. Maybe. There he goes. And bolt up under center, and here comes Getz. And Getz gets hit hard. Maybe a yard. I think if you're obviously Columbia City, you'd like to control this run out the clock and score. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's got to be the mindset of, of Coach Fox right now, with, especially with how, uh, as you like to say, how high octane that, uh, that East Noble offense is. And Bolt back to throw, and over the middle, down the seam. And they're going to get face guarding. Yep, they call a flag on uh, Zolman. Yeah, I mean, that that was, I think that was pretty clear, and he's trying to uh, to convince his story to the Stripes, but uh, when from my perspective, I couldn't even see Heron. Well, it hit the, yeah, it hit the, it hit it, the it, defender right in the back. Yeah, it hit Zolman right in the back, couldn't even see Heron. I mean, obviously, there's a... There's a, a bit of a size difference there, but still, I mean, that's that's playing face guarding right there. That's uh, something you cannot do. It's so pass interference. So that's gonna make take it all the way to the 22. First and 10 Eagles. You're right. You really couldn't see Heron. You saw no. Zolman, and the ball hit him dead square. <laughs> that's the all you could see. Yeah, you could not see Heron at all whatsoever. Two minutes straight up to go in the half. Seven to six, Columbia City. They're threatening. First and 10 at the East Noble 22, and Oh, Bolt keeps it. Pitches to Barrera. Barrera tries to turn the corner. He's going to get maybe a yard. And I guess he didn't go out of bounds. The clock's running. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, they're going to keep it running. I think his knee went down before he went okay. out of bounds. So no, uh, no gain either. Second and ten. Minute 34. Columbia City with two timeouts. And. Whoa, big one. 
Near first down, Seavers. That's going to be first and goal, isn't it? Yes, it will be. Tell you what, we ha we have not been able to call Seavers' name that much in the past couple weeks, and uh, Seavers coming up big right when we need him, especially in a big game against East Noble where we haven't won since 2011. He's doing his due diligence, that's for sure. Tight out East Noble with a minute 26 to go in the half. And here's Sean Underwriters. Tonight's game feed is brought to you by Morsh's Builders Mart, located at 516 East Van Buren Street in Columbia City, with locations in Huntington, Wabash, Warsaw, and Goshen. Online at morshesbuildersmart.com, serving northeastern Indiana since 1871. This broadcast is also brought to you by Bart's Car Store, selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. Bart's Car Store offers test drives, cash for trade-ins, and financing options. Bart's Car Store, serving Columbia City, Whitley County, and Fort Wayne. Captain Climbing checking in again tonight. Welcome to broad broadcast, Captain Climbing. <laughs> Captain Marty Climbing? Is that? That's right. That's nice. Captain Climbing. You know that guy. <laughs> Kissinger likes him. Kissinger here on the uh, video board tonight. He's doing a good job. Hasn't put any pictures of me up there yet or anything. No, we need to get a picture no, of him don't. up there. No. Yes, we do. Come on, Kissinger. No, no, no. We need that. There's no picture of me in that. We need computer. to make a meme out of T Bird. <laughs> meme? I don't even really know what a meme is. <laughs> Well, I try to stay lay low and avoid uh, shenanigans like that, but uh, no pictures on the board. All right, first and 10, or first and goal at the 10. Minute 26 for the Eagles. Two timeouts each way. And Bolt, hands to Seavers, and did he get down to the five? Yeah, it looks like he was, got down to, out of the five or the four. So a minute 15 to go in the half, clock's running, still two timeouts. So Seavers gains five, a minute 10, the clock runs. Columbia City definitely needs to punch this in. As we're down to a minute, 16 on the play clock. Eagles looking to the sidelines. 10 on the play clock. I guess we're gonna call timeout. Yeah, kind of think things over. Closet wanted a high five over yeah. here. And I was like, he stuck his hand. I was like, what is he wanting from me? He's coming back for the food. <laughs> hey, they brought more. <laughs> they brought more. Look at all that pizza over there, Glaza. <laughs> Thank you, sir. While well, Coach Fox talks it over with his team, WGHS Radio is brought to you by Mike and Sons Satellite and TV Services. Mike and Sons is an authorized DISH network and direct TV provider and is now offering 8-bay antenna TV hookups from Channel Master. That's up to 40 local channels from South Bend all the way to Fort Wayne. With 30 years of service experience, Mike is here locally, hands-on for every customer. Mike and Sons is available on the phone at 260-213-3251 and on Facebook as well as online at MikeAndSonsSatellite.com. Sounds like a lot of channels. Sounds like something I need. Well, we already know you get your White Sox network. That's no, for sure. No, 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 no. Contract hey. dispute. Oh, really? Dish and regional really? sports. Yeah, I don't. I haven't got the, the Sox for a couple of years. Hey, but you know what? Division champs. Yep. Saw that the other night. I was like, whoa. Since when did this happen? <laughs> well, you knew it was going to happen. Yeah, oh, okay. Coach Thompson's all going to be a trash here as I'm a Cubs fan. Here we go. Second and goal from the six. 42 seconds to go. We've got one timeout remaining. Bolt keeps it. Bolt cuts up field. Gets hit hard. Spins towards the goal line. He's going to be short at the one. Clock's going to. Oh, boy. Oh. Penalty. It's be the worst time for a holding penalty in that. Maybe what it is. And it's the stripes are talking to Columbia it over. City penalty. Chop block. Oh, my. It's going to take us out of the outside of the 10. It's a 15 yarder. Yeah, it's going to put us all the way back to. To what, the 20? Costly penalty there. Chop block on the Eagles. Coach gets an explanation, or one of the coaches. So we're back to 20. Second and goal from the 20. One timeout available for Columbia City. 36 seconds. Half to score. So. 
So we'll see what Bolton Company come up with. Here comes Fuller and Getz out in the receiving positions. Bolt up under center, takes the snap. He's going to roll with it himself. Bolt cuts up field and runs over a couple and gets down to the 10. They're going to have to hurry up. They used their timeout. Bolt got hit hard. Yeah, he did. That's the one thing I was thinking about that, like, please not the back. Please, let's protect that. So did we call time? Uh, I think that was East Noble. Interesting. Great blocking by Getz and Fuller, though, I must say, as the two receivers on the near side, they did a great job blocking and giving Bolt a bit of a gap just to get some yards back from that costly penalty. WJHS is brought to you in part by Indiana Physical Therapy, offering the highest credentialed therapists in the area, area treating all walks of life from peewees to professionals to Olympians. With 18 locations in northern Indiana, including Fort Wayne, Angola, Auburn, Bluff, Bluffton, Decatur, Elkhart, Goshen, Huntington, New Haven, and Warsaw, Indiana Physical Therapy is next to Oriental Buffet in Columbia City. Indiana Physical Therapy, online at indianapt.com. Coach Nelson checking in tonight. Want to know what the score is. Maybe he's not on the radio, but uh, at any rate, Coach Nelson, always a loyal listener. And, uh, well, they get the Eagle. That was it. It was an interesting timeout by East Noble. I, I don't know what the – it's. well, it's third and ten. Instead think, of forcing us into using our last timeout, it's just interesting. I think part of it was just he wanted to give his defense a bit of a break and well, take a breather. I mean, I mean, they're they're back on their heels and they're trying to make sure that that the Eagles don't get into the end zone. So he just probably just wanted to talk it over, relax, calm the guys down. So so we'll see if it works here for them. Third and goal from the ten for Columbia City. Twenty five seconds, sixteen on the play clock here. Clock frozen. Bolt has his plays up under center. Seavers back there. They fake to Seavers and Bolt looking, throws for the corner, and that's going to be over Shear to the pylon, incomplete. He just barely overthrew Shear, too. He had, I mean, he, he threw into double coverage, but Shear had two guys beat, and if he took just a little bit of sauce off that, that's an easy touchdown all day, every day for Peyton Shear. So the Eagles forced to have a field goal attempt. It'll be a 32 yards. Clefficker to kick. Piper to hold. And timeout, East Noble. The nice to kicker. Yeah, nice Clefficker. Well, while they try to uh, keep Clefficker's foot cold, tonight's microphones are from the support of Flow Tech Plumbing and Heating, serving locally for 30 years. They offer furnace tune ups and complete repair. More information is available at flowtechpnh.com. Tonight's game show is brought to you in part by ProFed Credit Union, providing our community with modern banking services. With individual attention for personal accounts and businesses alike, ProFed Credit Union specializes in savings for goals, mortgages, car loans, and business banking too. ProFed Credit Union serves northern Indiana with a network of 37,000 plus ATMs and 12 branch locations. They are now in Columbia City, just off of US 30 near Walmart. All right, well, it's going to be Clefficker to attempt a field goal with 18 seconds to go in the half. 7 to 6, Columbia City. Certainly looked like we were going to find pay dirt, but uh, did not get the end zone. Big chop block penalty really set us back. All right, Piper to hold, Clefficker to kick. Never did get the long snapper. High snap, and it's going to be good. I don't know if he got all he wanted on it, but it's through the uprights. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, East Noble was closing in there. I mean, they were kind of hungry for a block there. We blocked them once on a on an extra point, and uh, they were uh, they were trying to block block Clefficker there for sure. So 11:48 of the second, Columbia City, a 32-yard field goal by Clefficker. As Leach sets off some fireworks in the distance. Yep. Our amazing athletic director, Kelly Leach. 32 yard field goal. And Eagles up by a 10 6 count. So they did not come up empty handed. Question, question is, Coach, do you think East Noble is going to try and uh, put some magic here, <laughs> like find some magic and return it all the way back for a TD? Or th do you think they're just going just gonna to let the clock roll? Well, they'll try to return it, but. Um, I don't know. I suppose we'll see another, maybe a squid another, kick. Another, or yeah, a pooch maybe kick. A pooch. I don't think you're going to see anything deep. 
It makes me wonder about one of those two return men. Mm-hmm. I mean, one one of them is is Nichols, and I mean we've we've He's seen him. He's well. Yeah, he, we've seen him turn on the Jets, but not sure about the other return men. So Clef gear to kick. Twelve seconds to go in half. Ten six Columbia City over East Noble. So both teams got shut out last week. Half points this week. And yeah, get a little pooch uh, medium range kick and stayed in bounds and picked up at the 15, the 20, zigzag out across the 25, and they knock him out of bounds around the 32. Hey, hey, Garrett Cluffaker. Another knock, tackle? Yeah, not a tackle. He shoved him out of bounds, but I'll tell you what, coach, I'm going to say it and say it every time that Cluffaker gets gets a tackle. Punters are people too, coach. Well, he's he's had a, he's had a lot of deals this year where he's been the last one standing. He's been the last line of defense, not but the, boy. Not that he was there. But boy, Pat McAfee would be happy with Garrett Cluffaker's performance this season, again, for the brand. 29-yard <laughs> line, East Noble with six seconds. With which to work, and will they try uh, something deep, or will they... They they very well see. could they they could just hand it off to Nichols and try to see if he try to see if he can find a if he can find a hole or maybe throw it to one of his bigger receivers on the outside. Here we go, and Brazel back rolls it deep and almost intercepted. Three Eagles and one night in the vicinity and that's it. And we head to the intermission, ten to six Columbia City over East Noble and. Uh, Sean's going to have a talk with uh, volley volleyball coach uh, Ryan Comfort here. Well, I'm going to have to talk. Why not you? Oh, I don't know. I thought you were. You asked. I'm care. the manager, man. I'm there every week. You what? You. Well, you'll talk to me. Well, I thought Sean was going to interview you. No. no. Uh, he wants to eat pizza. That's what the deal is. Well, that's partially it, but then the other half is, you know, coach to coach. Come on now. Well. Bit of a coach's corner here. Coach's Corner, huh? That used to be a show a long time ago on WFDT when I was about 10 years old. <laughs> that was a long time oh, ago. Oh, yes. Yes, it was. Well, Ryan Comfort, uh, I guess your uh, interim coach is uh, Coach Daniels uh, uh, had a baby. And uh, so um, how is that working out? Um, it's a heck of an experience. I'm learning a lot of things. And, you know, it's a it's a new role, and you got to figure out how to do it. But th this, this group is easy to coach. Um, and I love this school and this program, so it's been a lot of fun. Well, good. And uh, you're heading, uh, well, we're, what, down to about two weeks before the uh, sectional, I believe. So uh, tell us what's uh, coming up here. Uh, well, we have the draw this Sunday um, at 7 o'clock, so I'm anxious and ready to see how that pans out. Um, then we got our final week of the regular season. Um, with two more conference matches this week, too, all at home, which is nice because it's been a long season on the road. But... Um, so yeah, we got three three matches this week, and then a Saturday tournament on the ninth, and then it's all in on sectionals. And I can't believe it's already October, and, and we're into postseason fall sports. But it's here, and it, it's come fast. But I uh, mean, this group, <coughs> we got a shot this year, that's for sure. Yeah, and you talk about the postseason uh, sneaking up on us, and, and we've been done for a week, and then girls golf, and uh, yeah, it. Uh, it's amazing how it seems to go. But uh, so uh, give us a little uh, uh, report here on our uh, sectional field and uh, where are we going for the sectional, Ryan? Uh, so we actually host it this year. Oh, that's uh -huh, right. That's right. So that's that'll be a really cool experience just to host it and not have to go anywhere else. But, um, you know, we're in, in sectional with Homestead, Huntington North, New Haven, Wayne, and Southside. Um, Homestead's the team to beat. They, they have been the last few years. And... Um, we beat Huntington North. We beat New Haven already this season. But, you know, I mean, postseason is different. you got to go out and it's hard to beat a team twice. So that's part of our part of our process, too, is making sure whoever we draw outside of Homestead, we gotta, we got to check in and take care of business, too. But, um, yeah, Homestead's, Homestead's the beast to beat. But um, we played them really competitively at Homestead uh, in early September. So... The trick is just to see how much we've grown versus how much they've grown and, you know, what kind of product we put out there on game day. Oh, good. we got three home matches. I think I might have to get out here this week. I haven't seen a volleyball game in the new, new gym yet. How long have you been with the volleyball program? I know you've, what, a 2017 uh, graduate, uh, right? Yes, 2017. Uh, this is my fourth season All right. uh, at, at Columbia City. So this senior class on Monday night is the first class that I've been able to coach all four years and so that's going to be a pretty special night and i've already been 
<clears throat> been trying to keep my emotions in check already, but probably won't on Monday night. That's right, and you uh, played uh, volleyball uh, well in high school. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, the Columbia City has a boys' volleyball program, and I was that's how I was introduced to the game, and that's how it got me into coaching. Well, excellent, and uh, hopefully get a big crowd out here this week, and uh, especially for that senior night. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's spread the news and, and – and I'll let everybody know that we're hosting sectionals. I want that gym to be packed, and I want that home court advantage. And it can be loud. Uh, so uh, tell us about we've got senior night. Uh, how many seniors we got uh, coming up here? We got an extended halftime apparently. So uh, uh, four seniors: um, Carly Price, Molly McCoy, Jill Whaley, and, and Savannah Reed. And and while I'm talking about it, I want to give a shout out to to Savannah Reed. Um, she she just recently broke the, the school record for career assists, and she also has the school record for career aces. So uh, it's been that group has been a lot of fun to coach, and they've done a lot of good things on on the court and for this program. So I'm excited to see what the next 12 days looks like for this group. So 12 days till the tournament, and uh, is that a three-day deal or, or just two days? Do they so cram it all into two or two days? So Thursday. Uh, the 14th we could get a draw so we may not play that day uh, and then that saturday morning there's the semifinal matches and then the, the the championship matches saturday night here at columbia city interesting that uh you, you only do two days there and you, you look at a basketball sectional and it's a tuesday friday oh, saturday yeah. i that uh, seems interesting but it, perhaps the way that's the way it is in volleyball uh, across the board you know Different sections. I mean, we only have, what, six teams? Yeah. Um, some sectionals have eight. Some sectionals have Seven. ten. So they'll play, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, um, you know, just the way it's set up. So, But obviously we compete with football on Friday, so there's no competition True. for that in, in the spring or in the winter. <clears throat> and so how much time is there between a potential semifinal match on Saturday morning and a championship match? So, if I remember right, the semifinal matches are at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Um, and typically that match lasts between, you know, a little over an hour to close to two hours, depending if it goes to three to five sets. So, normally you're done by one, and the championship match is at seven. So, in the past couple years ago when we played Homestead in the championship at Huntington North, you know, we had to stay at Huntington North and – um, just kind of kill some time, relax, and then find a way to check back in. It'll be nice to be home um, if we if we put ourselves in that position. But and that's that's a new thing for me too. How do I how do I manage those kids in that time and you know figure out the best way to get us game ready for that championship match? But we were talking about it before uh, the game tonight, Thompson. 37 years since that sectional win, <laughs> 1984, so and and this group. And I know like every coach feels it. But you know the truth is, is you know this team really can do that. We got we got to play some of our best volleyball, that's for sure. But we don't have it's not a you know it's not a punter's chance. You know this is a good team. Homestead's a good team, but you know I, I like I like our odds this season, that's for sure. Outstanding, yeah. That's a long drive. We've had a lot of them around here over the years, uh, and uh, time to uh, time to get off to Schneid and uh, take home that sectional trophy. And uh, wish you the best of luck and. Uh, I'm sure your uh, Coach Daniels talks to you now and then. So oh, yeah, every single night. Every, every single, single night. night. Yep. So uh, that's Coach's Corner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is Coach's Corner. Coach's Corner. All right, Ryan. Well, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate your time. And good luck to the volleyball program this week. And everybody get out there for senior night on Monday. Yes, Monday. It's at Varsity. will start around 7. All right, Coach Ryan Comfort, Lady of Volleyball. Thanks, Thompson. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Absolutely. And also uh, the girls' basketball program selling uh, uh, pork burgers tonight they wanted me to mention. Also, good luck to the tennis team who plays the sectional championship tomorrow. I'm not sure against he who, but uh, good luck to uh, Coach Stanzak and our tennis players as they go for uh, only the second ever tennis sectional, I believe, in uh, school history and boys. So um, good luck to the uh, tennis uh, guys as well. And that is here at our place, although Warsaw's technically the host, it is at our, our court. So you might, if you're in tennis, come on out here tomorrow. So let's go over some statistics here. Total offense, 148 yards for the East Noble Knights on 31 plays, almost five yards per play. Columbia City, 122 yards of total offense on 30 plays and uh, four yards per uh, play for the Eagles on average. Passing, three of nine for East Noble for 67 yards through the air. 
11 yards passing for Columbia City on just one of six. So the air game, a little bit of a struggle for the Eagles tonight. Uh, rushing 81 yards on 22 carries for the East Noble Knights, averaging almost four yards per carry. Columbia City, 111 yards on 24 carries, and that's almost five yards per carry. And uh, again, three receptions for the 67 yards for East Noble, one for 11 for the Eagles. Uh, penalties three for 30 yards against the East Noble Knights, four penalties against Columbia City for 40 yards. We have one East Noble turnover, which Columbia City took advantage of. It was a fumble. Um, no interceptions through on punting average, two for 35 for Klein. Or I think that's Zolman that does the punting. Um, and three for 34 on average for Garrett Kleficker of Columbia City. Time of possession, 13 minutes, 10 seconds for Columbia City, or check that, East Noble. 10 minutes, 38 seconds for Columbia City. First downs, both squads have eight. First downs on the ground, both squads have five. First downs through the air, two for the Knights, one for the Eagles. First downs via the penalty, one for the Knights, two for the Eagles. Third down efficiency, two of five, four for the Knights, two of six, four of the home team. Fourth down, one of two for East Noble. Columbia City yet to attempt a fourth down conversion. Uh, Brazel's line, Xander Brazel, three of nine through the air, 67 yards. Uh, Greg Bolt, uh, one of six, 11 yards. So the quarterback's not having the... Uh, not lighting up the scoreboard, more of a running game tonight. Um, for rushing East Noble's Ethan Nichols, 13 carries, 61 yards, almost average five yards per carry, and a touchdown. Uh, Cannon Carrico, seven carries, 23 yards. Brazel, the quarterback, kept it two times for a negative three. For Columbia City, their side of the ledger looks like this. Ethan Seavers, seven carries for 57 yards. Eight yards per carry on average. James gets nine carries 22 yards. Uh, Greg Bolt, four carries for 20, averaging five uh, per carry. You know, and, and the touchdown by Bolt as he snuck it in from a yard out. Josh Arnst, three carries, 12 yards. A Barrera, a carry for no yardage. Uh, receiving, yes, this is band senior night, that's right. Okay, Roland Zolman, one reception, 43 yards. Brett Christian, one reception, 16 yards. Ethan Nichols, one reception, eight yards for the Knights. For Columbia City, Stratton Fuller, lone reception for 11 yards. Peyton Shear had a couple thrown to him, but uh, was not able to convert. Tackling Elston, four. Arntz, four. Carnahan, three. Uh, Brock Uher, two and a half. Two for Brody Barker. Uh, Cole Mosier, tackle and a half. And Garrett Kleficker, uh, the punter, got one. Martin Smith, one. Fuller, one. Heron, one. Heiser, one. And Gorey, I think, one. Uh, if I got my numbering right, yes. Um, so that's the way the tackling looks. Kicking uh, field goals, one one for Kleficker. It was a 33-yarder. And the extra point, he has four points on the half. And Klein for East Noble had his kick blocked. Uh, Zolman punted two times for 70 yards, pinned Columbia City inside the 20. Kleficker punted three times for 102 yards, pinned East Noble inside the 20 one time. Uh, punt returns uh, gets uh, one for no yards, and returns Munson one for 14 on kickoffs. For East Noble gets one for 44 on a kickoff return for the Maroon and Gold. Scoring looked like this as Columbia City would get on the board first at the 9.43 mark, 8.43 mark, check that. Greg Bolt runs for a one yard on a quarterback sneak and an eagle touchdown. The point after by Garrett Kleficker was good. Columbia City seven, East Noble nothing at that point. And then East Noble gets on the board at the 11.09 uh, marker of the first when Ethan Nichols runs for 19 yards. Nice run by Nichols as he shredded the defense of the Eagles. Barely touched. Uh, touchdown by Nichols. The point after by Klein was blocked by Columbia City. And it was seven to six at that point. And then Columbia City, a couple opportunities uh, late. And they get a costly penalty on a chop block late uh, that put them back uh, several yards as they were first and goal at the uh, 10. But uh, in the end, it's a 27-yard field goal by Garrett Kleficker at the 11:48 uh, mark, and it splits the uprights, and that gives us the uh, score at the intermission. 
10 to 6 in favor of the Columbia City Eagles over East Noble. So that's uh, the statistics. Thank you, Mr. Stetzel. Trevor Stetzel on stats, former football player here. And uh, so in his band senior night. And uh, got any scores on Twitter, maybe, or conference scores we can find, maybe? Um, let's see. I. Do you want me to do CC sports? Or do you want me to just do well, football Well, check, check our sports real first. We've got tennis tomorrow, sectional we championship. We do, yep. Man. We have sectional championship. I'm trying to find who they're playing in that sectional championship. Well, I, don't, I don't know either. But I saw Coach Stanzak earlier this morning, and I meant to talk to him about it, but I think he left. It's likely Warsaw, if I had to guess. But um, that would be a big one for sure. If we could get that one, so we've only won one ever. And Let's see. Um, check that Twitter. Let's see. On Monday, the oh, we were talking about Coach Comfort and the Lady Eagle volleyball team. Monday, they traveled to play Heritage. Um, JV lost. One to two. Set scores were 13 to 25, 25 to 17, and then four to 15. And then varsity lost in three. Set scores were 10 to 25, 19 to 25, and 13 to 25. Then on Tuesday they ta they traveled to play DeKalb. Um, if I can find the score, here it is. Um, if that's no, that's not the, okay, never mind. I cannot find the DeKalb scores. Var I know Varsity lost, Varsity lost in three against DeKalb, but then they traveled to East Noble last night. Freshmen lost in a close game. They, bo they lost both sets, 24 to 25. It's a very close game there for the freshman. JV 1 and 2, 25 19, 25 16. And then varsity improved to a 4 and 1 uh, conference record with a three set victory. They won um, those, those set scores were 25 19, 25 21, and 25 15. <laughs> Let's go to. Let's go to Mr. Leach's Twitter page, see what we got right here. Girls sectional draw, I don't know if you announced that. Uh, that for one, soccer? Coach. Yeah, for, for girls soccer. First match is Leo versus Garrett. Second is Fort Wayne Concordia Lutheran versus Tippy Valley. And then match three uh, is us. We await the, the winner of Leo versus Garrett. And then the championship match will be the winner of match two, so between Concordia Lutheran and Tippy Valley, and the winner between Columbia City and the the uh, winner of Leo and Garrett. Boys soccer sectional draw. First match is Fort Wayne Wayne versus Homestead. Uh, second match is Huntington North versus Fort Wayne Southside. Match three is the winner of match one versus the winner of match two. And then match four is Columbia City versus New Haven, as we believe we got that first round by. And then the championship game is the winner of the third match uh, versus the winner of that Columbia City New Haven game. So a lot going on here. And uh, Eagle Sports is the halftime was extended for band senior night. And so we've got. Uh, about four minutes left uh, in the intermission and then the three minute warm up period. So, also, uh, Robbie Dillon checking in from Flowtech. He says that uh, he thought Courtney uh, Tobin broke a record this week. So, I don't know if there's any. Uh, yeah, Co Courtney Tobin surpassed the CCHS single season scoring record with her 29th tally of the season. Okay. And let's see. Uh, so, and also, Courtney Tobin. Etched in history is scoring the final goal at Max Gandy Field in ladies soccer. And of course, her brother scored the last goal for the boys. Actually, I have a signed soccer ball for the two of uh, them, or 
by the two of them for the Alumni uh, Association archives. But uh, got good, that boys good stuff. I got that boys tennis where they beat Whitco um, on Thursday night, 5-0. They moved on to the sectional championship, and they are playing Wallace at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Ooh, Wallace got Warsaw. Wow. And that's going to be held here at Columbia City. So come out, support our boys' tennis, t boys tennis players. I'm sure they would appreciate the support. So you give a time. What'd you say? Uh, they will play at 9 a.m. Nine. Real cool at 9 a.m. That's for sure. So um, don't forget uh, JV ball. Football boys will be on the road tomorrow in Kendallville, 10 o'clock. So we got a former, we got another bolt right outside the window here. Yeah, this this was the bolt that uh, dried <laughs> that dried our windows with the ice on it. That's right. We got bolt family usually sits in this. I'm top not sure. Row here. Kissinger, were you there that night? Where we started having ice on the yeah, some ice on, the, on the press box windows. <laughs> Bolt, we gave Bolt a breadstick and a napkin to, <laughs> to wipe it down. <laughs> so the Eagles parading by the uh, fans. They traditionally do. Walk all the way across in front of the fans. That's kind of neat. Gives the uh, guys and the fans uh, a thrill. Junior Football League night as uh, several JFL players uh, were introduced before the game as the Eagles come onto the field and the Knights filing out of the uh, visitors locker room on the northeast side. And Columbia City gets the ball to start the half. So should definitely carry momentum from that last drive where Kluffaker was able to to throw a couple more points on the board, that's for sure. So, uh, so definitely would would like to see Bolt and uh, and his army march down the field yet again, and see if we can get into the red zone and penetrate into the end zone. All right, I'll check my Twitter, see if I can find any uh, conference scores by chance. I could probably check too. My Twitter is actually working. The rest of it doesn't seem to be, but uh, the Twitter is. Uh, Trying to think. Well, there's a score from the southern part of the state. I don't think anybody's too interested in that. But uh, that's <laughs> yeah. the first score I find. Gibson Southern 14, Mount Vernon nothing. But all I know is that to, or that Norwell is at DeKalb t is at DeKalb tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a score a update on that though. Just as to who's playing. Wayne is ahead of Concordia 22-14. That's actually live on my phone. Look at that. We got game feed from <laughs> from Wayne Stadium. Um, our season's ended there a couple times over the years. Uh, let's see if we can find any other local. There's that Gibson Southern score again. I don't know why I'm getting scores from the southern part of the state, but uh, uh, state girls golf going on today. Evansville North with a comfortable lead in that. There's another score from southern Indiana. Good grief, where are all the northeast Indiana scores? Oh, here's the... Oh, here is the battle for the totem pole. The battle for the totem pole in Fort Wayne as uh, Northside leads Southside 21 to seven at the intermission at uh, on South Calhoun Street in Fort Wayne. And what do we have here? I'm getting everything, everything from every corner of the here, state. Here we go. I got you. I got you, Coach Leo. Um, they are at Huntington North tonight. At the end of the at the end of the first half, Leo led 22 to six. All right. So there's some conference play for you. And the three-minute warm-up period underway. We got uh, well, here's a heavyweight battle in 6A. Carmel 21, Ben Davis 13 at the intermission. Ooh. That's a heavyweight ranked team. Ooh, uh, you, you got the battle of uh, Carroll and Homestead over yes, in Fort Wayne right. tonight. Carroll is on top of Hor uh, <laughs> on top of Homestead, fourteen to three. Ah, interesting. It's typically not something that you would expect from from well, uh, from playing well from Homestead football, though. I mean, Homestead, obviously, uh, as Justin Daly would like to say on the Blows of Sports, be a perennial powerhouse. That's right. That's a good term. And uh, looks like Concordia just put a touchdown on the board against Wayne. And uh, South Adams, whoever they're playing, is they're leading 42-6 to six in a route at 
halftime. They don't tell who they're playing, but uh, at least that's somewhat in the area. Turn that music on. Hey, hey, hey. That's coming from Fox. Okay, okay. We'll Northside uh, just kicked a field goal. Okay. <laughs> so that should be 24 to 7. So that's kind of some area scores. and. I don't know why, I'm getting a lot from all over the place on my deal, but. Uh, what do you say? Bishop Lures is playing Bishop Dwinger tonight. Lures is on top, 27 to 21. <laughs> wow, that's a dandy. That's a, that's a great matchup. I'll tell you what, Bishop Lures, they are a, uh, they've got a really good football program, and uh, Bishop Dwinger, obviously, they're, they're just known for pretty much any sport that they compete in. That's definitely for sure. So we're getting ready here. Under a minute in the uh, second time frame here. And Eagles huddled up with their special teams coach. Not sure who the special teams coach is, but uh, Klein will kick to get the half underway. And Eagles going to break the huddle. And that final 25 will run out, and then we will have second half action. 10-6, Columbia City over East Noble. Second half about to commence. Gets and four. How about a, how about a run back? Be nice. That would be very nice. I mean, we were, we were talking with uh, with Coach Stetzel at half, where we were talking about the size comparison between oh, yeah. between Getz and Zolman. Zolman being the six foot five, two ten receiver for East Noble. So. Uh, so yeah, I mean, a bit of a size difference, and I think you can tell on the field, but still, Columbia City's been handling it really well. So here we go, Klein puts it in the air, kicks it deep, and it's gonna be fielded by Getz at the four, and he's gonna fake the reverse, and no, he does give it to four, and four gets hammered! Big hit at the 12. I mean, Getz might have been better off to take that one. He looked like he had some blockers yeah. over there. Talking about Zolman, he was the one that just delivered the blow to Getz, or to Fuller, check yep. that. So that was about a one-yard return after the reverse handoff there. So seven seconds uh, elapsed, and the Eagles with position, field position at their own 12. So we'll see if we can engineer another drive. Oh, put that up there. <laughs> Kissinger. Hey, whatever entertains the fans, Coach. <laughs> How can you make a meme? How can you make a meme of me? I don't even know what a meme is to start with. <laughs> it's the guy from Seinfeld. Oh, that guy, yeah, somebody thinks I look like him. Both hands off, and here's Seavers, I think, for a couple. Oh, four yards. No, five yards, maybe. Ball to the 16, second and five. Second and six. Okay, well. Bolt up under center. Pretty tight bunch formation. Bolt hands off, and Columbia City Seavers gets tripped up immediately. Looks like no gain. One thing that I've noticed from these first couple of plays, we've kind of strayed away from the full house backfield. Just just throwing one, one back into uh, in that position right behind Bolt. So third and five, Eagles. Need a first down. They don't need to go three and out here in the initial drive. Almost a minute gone in third. 10-6 Columbia City over East Noble. And uh, not going to get it. Not even close. Barrera there. Fourth down, six, seven. And out comes Garrett Kleffaker. So the return man as the Eagles go three and out as it's going to be Munson, the return man. He's going to stand about his 45. So the Eagles mustered four yards on that uh, coming out of the locker room, boy. So here's the snap. Kleficker with time. Well, they almost got a block, and good kick. Going to be fielded by Munson at the 45. Munson shakes and bakes, wheels and deals, and going to be chased down. Don't overdo it, guys, and good tackle there. That's uh, Martin Smith there on the tackle. Well, Smith gets after it. He tackles <laughs> yeah. hard. And especially in these past couple of weeks, Martin Smith has really stepped up for this Eagles defense and special teams as well. He's been able to make some big plays, been able to uh, keep offenses at bay. Well, so East Noble gets the ball back quickly. A minute 47 going in the third. They trailed Columbia City 10-6, to and the they have a decent field position at the 47-yard line, their own 47. 
So, Brazzle back to work with the East Noble offense, the sophomore quarterback. He's got three receivers out. Gotta watch Zolman. Brazzle takes the snap, looking to throw, throws it deep, and gonna be just incomplete off the fingertips. Intended receiver there was Nick Munson. Just, just off of his fingertips. I mean, he, uh, he was close to bringing that in, coach. Yep. I'll tell you what. I mean, Brazel overthrew him, but he, he, he yeah, uh, closed some uh, space in between him and that ball, and he was able to get his fingertips on that. He was so close to reeling that thing in. That would have been a sweet catch. Second and ten. Brazel takes the snap, hands off, and Eagles. Stifle that, although they're still on their feet. Forward progress, maybe a yard. Big scrum there. Who's at the bottom of the pile, that one? Nichols, There's I think, was the ball carrier. I think that was Mosier there on the tackle for the Eagles. Mosier indeed. And gain of one, third down nine. Ball at the 47-yard line, 48-yard line, check that. 9.40 to go in the third. Clock rolls, Brazel with plenty of time on the play, Cock. Takes the snap, a little bubble screen caught by Zolman, and they're gonna drag him down short of the first down. They're gonna mark him about two yards short. Great defense there by Hunter Heron just being able, that's, that's sheer willpower there by yep. Hunter Heron. I mean, we were talking about in the first half that size difference in between Heron and Zolman, and uh, Heron was able to use his <laughs> brute strength and leverage just to be able to bring Zolman down two yards short of that first down marker. And they'll go for it on fourth and a long two. Razzle in the shotgun. Two receivers out uh, far side. Here comes one in motion, and they fake. And on the run, Brazzle incomplete. No flags. East Noble turns it over on downs to Columbia City. Big defensive stand. Yeah, intended receiver there was uh, Kanan Carrico. And uh, that was just a bad throw by Brazel there, just overthrew his man. And uh, so the Eagle defense uh, comes up big after the Eagle offense kind of struggled out of the gate here in the half. <laughs> What's that character's name on Seinfeld? Oh, George, yeah, George. I've been, I, people have told me I look like him before <laughs> a long time ago, so. <laughs> anyway, oh my lord, the Eagles get plastered. Line of scrimmage and Getz gets uh, eaten up. Swarmed. Holiday in there, big holiday. Second and 10. So, eight and a half to go in the third. 10-6 Columbia City, they have the football, second offensive possession of the half. And they hand off and that's not gonna go, well maybe two. Seavers for a couple, and it's gonna be third down and eight. I think we need to go back to running outside of the hashes, Coach. I mean, we, we've been, so far in, this, in the start of this second half, we've been running it up the gut, and we need to use our speed. We need to use gets, we need to use fuller, we need to turn the corner. We gotta have good blocking on the outside to do that, but we showed that we could do it in the first half. Third and eight, eight minutes to go. Bolt takes the snap, rolls to the far side, he's gonna have to throw against the green. Incomplete. Intended receiving was, receiver was Stratton Fuller there. So the punting unit on for Columbia City on fourth and eight. 7.52 to go in the third clock stopped. Yes, uh, Bolt was just uh, kind of being chased uh, by the Armada there and <laughs> found a late receiver and uh, just not being able to throw it in. I mean, he put it in a great spot yep. for only Fuller to be able to touch that ball, but still. Tough catch. It was a tough catch, but ball was a bit low. Well, almost blocked. Kleficker gets it off. And they feel it to 21. Nice move, but the Eagles. No, oh, they let him off the hook. Oh, let him off the hook again. 40, 45, 50, 45, 40, 35. And he's going to go all the way. Touchdown, East Noble. Holy smokes. Holy Toledo. We've got an injured player down, but that is not. No flag on the field. That's touchdown. Munson. As Eagles had him three times and let him get away. 12 10 East Noble. Yeah, it's just not, not great punt coverage there by the Eagles. I mean, it was just, you had probably, I think, you had the first, the, the first initial, like, what, three, three defenders there with an attempt to tackle him and just 
three on one. We will you would think that, yeah, you would think the odds are in our favor. It just some good moves there by Munson, and it was good morning, good afternoon, and good night after that. As he rumbles uh, at least 75 yards there for the touchdown. East Noble up 12-10. We have an injury timeout as there's an injured eagle down there. While that's ta being taken care of, talk to you about some underwriters real quick. Tonight's game feed is brought to you by Morsher's Builders Mart, located at 516 East Van Buren Street in Columbia City, with locations in Huntington, Wabash, Warsaw, and Goshen. Online at morshersbuildersmart.com, serving north northeastern Indiana since 1871. This broadcast is brought to you by uh, Bart's Car Store, selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. Bart's Car Store offers test drives, cash for trade-ins, and financing options. Bart's Car Store, serving Columbia City, Whitley County, and Fort Wayne. WJHS Radio is also brought to you by Mike and Sons Satellite and TV Services. Mike and Sons is an authorized dish network and direct TV provider and is now offering 8-bay antenna TV hookups from Channel Master. That's up to 40 local channels from South Bend all the way to Fort Wayne. With 30 years of experience, Mike is here locally, hands-on for every customer. Mike and Sons is available on the phone at 260-213-3251. They're also on Facebook and online at MikeAndSonsSatellite.com. So Jack Maley being assisted off the field as he took a hard hit holding an ankle up so uh something there not putting any weight on that so east noble will come on to attempt the point after as it's 13 12 or 12 10 uh, in favor of east noble on that uh punt return uh, i think it was about 65 yards i don't see where i don't remember where he caught it but it was a long one at any rate so klein on to kick trying to put east noble up three East Noble takes the lead for the first time tonight. And here's the snap, the set. And he got it through. That looked uh, ugly, but uh, it flutters through, and it's 13-10. WJHS is brought to you in part by Indiana Physical Therapy, offering the highest credentialed therapist in the area treating all walks of life from peewees to professionals to Olympians with 18 locations in northern Indiana including Fort Wayne, Angola, Auburn, Bluffton, Decatur, Elkhart, Goshen, Huntington, New Haven, and Warsaw. Indiana Physical Therapy is next to Oriental Buffet in Columbia City. Indiana Physical Therapy online at indianapt.com. Tonight's microphones are from the support of Flotech Plumbing and Heating, serving locally for 30 years. They offer furnace tune-ups and complete repair. More information is available at flotechpnh.com. So, momentum swings in East Noble's favor. As uh, we've got uh, 425 going in third, and East Noble up for the first time tonight, 13 to 10. Run back there of a punt. So Klein will kick off. Now the Eagles have to answer. Again, it's another night of uh, offense struggling to uh, finish at times, but uh, we finished a couple of times, but we need to, we're going to have to finish some more. The Sea Snowball team's lost two straight. Columbia City lost last week to New Haven. And long kick and going to be fielded by Getz at the six. It's uh, 10, 15, 20. And Getz runs into traffic. It's hauled down at the 26. Getz at about the 26, 27-yard line brought down by Brett Christensen. Christensen on the tackle. So decent field position. First and 10 where? 26? Uh, yeah. Yep. yep. So the Eagles. Try to answer the Knights. <laughs> As they trail for the first time tonight, 13-10 to the East Noble Knights. So what is that, 13 over there from the, uh, is that Heron over there on the reception? I believe that is. And nothing. Seavers, maybe a half yard, maybe a yard. Again, going, trying to go up the gut and uh, I feel like we just need to go back to what worked for us in the first half. Getting to the sidelines. Okay, well, second nine. Move up on the seven-minute mark to go in the third. 
And Sievers cuts up the middle and gets hit hard. He's going to get five. Okay, third down four. Zolman, the tackle. I don't want to meet him head on. So Eagles at the 31. Second or third and four. And it looks like Hare will come to the near side this time. Bunched formation again. Bolt. He's going to take it upfield, and he gets hit in the backfield. And good morning, good afternoon, and good night as they swarm Bolt. As East Noble absolutely right in our grill again. Yeah, I mean, when, when Bolt turned around to come to the near sideline, everything on the left part of the offensive line just kind of crippled and fell apart, and that's where East Noble's defensive line just came right in and tackled Bolt from behind. Well, the Eagles punt again. Halfway through the third, and they trail 13-10, and Munson had the uh, run back last time. Kleficker, and there's a flag flying in there at the end. That's going to land short of Munson, and he's going to get away from it. It's going to take a Columbia City bounce. 27. We'll see what this penalty marker is, but, Coach, that's our third straight three and out in six minutes. Yeah, not... Uh, not been overly productive here. So they're going to discuss what's going on here. Now yeah, personal foul call against East Noble. On East Noble, I didn't see anything, but now Coach Luke Amstutz is, wants an explanation. He's not happy. So it's been relatively calm at the game. It's been a little bit of shoving after a couple plays, but nothing egregious until whatever happened there. But uh, so that's going to give the Eagle offense back onto the field. With relatively the same field position that we were dealing with before. I mean, right about, what, the 26, 26, 25? No, yeah, we're going to uh, move it. Yeah. So 15 yards on a personal foul against East Noble. Zolman pleading a case with the official. But maybe he was the guilty party. I don't know. Looks like the official signaled that he extended the arms to hit. I don't know what. Okay, so we got that bunch formation again, and now what? Do they have the ball spotted right? No, they move it up. About a foot. <laughs> yeah. 44-yard line. First and 10 Eagles. They get a huge break there. Now can they take advantage? 5.46 to go, third quarter, 13-10 East Noble, that bunch formation again. Bolt up the middle, and Bolt's going to drag the pile for about five towards midfield. Bolt drags the pile. Yeah, that's typically what it, what happens when you when you keep the ball in his hands. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, we, we've we seen it time in and time out throughout the progression of the season, but also just tonight we, that we've seen that, that quarterback sneak by Bolt, and it's been quite effective picking up. Good chunks of yards, about three to six yards, so. And Bolt gives it to Barrera. Barrera can't turn the corner, loses a couple. Tackle by uh, Nichols there. So third down, six. I think Nichols was the sole defender there that, yep. that was able to reach Barrera. I didn't see any other white jersey. It was just Nichols, so he somehow broke through. So now here and out to the wide side. And otherwise, that same formation, everybody bunched in there. Third and six Eagles. Their own 48. And Bolt on the run, looking to throw. Hurls it deep, and Heron's down there. Caught! Heron inside the 10 at the eight yard line. Holy smokes! Heron! With the uh, defender draped all over him. Yeah, he had uh, Dalton Stinson all over Heron. I mean, and that was. Uh, just pure, that's a 50-50 that's a ball, and Heron made it work. Stinson it was a great catch. Back. That almost one-handed that, didn't he? I, it's hard to see, but he caught it. Nearly, but he, pin, he pinned it against his chest, I think, with his left hand, and then just secured it with his right. Okay, Columbia City, first and goal at the eight. Bolt, going to throw. No, he's going to run. Takes off, and Bolt oh, gets hit hard at the five. It looked like he took a hit to the head, but he came yeah, up relatively but it, quickly. But he went down. I mean, he led with the – so he was prone to that. So second to goal at the 5, 4, 10 to go. Third quarter, clock running, 13, 10 East Noble. Columbia City, the benefactor of a huge break. Now they have to take advantage. 
And it was a personal foul on East Noble. Brought the Eagle offense back onto the field. And play clock down to 10. Eagles better get going. Still in the huddle. Five. And down to two. Bolt. Oh, timeout, Eagles. Timeout, Eagles. So timeout, Eagles. 3.38 to go in the third. 13-10. Tonight's game stream is brought to you in part by ProFed Credit Union, providing our community with modern banking services with individual attention for personal accounts and businesses alike. ProFed Credit Union specializes in savings for goals, mortgages, car loans, and business banking too. ProFed Credit Union serves northern Indiana with a network of 37,000 plus ATMs and 12 branch locations. They are now in Columbia City, just off of US 30 near Walmart. Tonight's game score, game score updates on WJHS are brought to you by Moot Over Ice Cream Shop. Building flavors from scratch, Moot Over offers ice cream flavors including sunny chocolate nut free, strawberry jam, rocky road, and custom candied pecan. Moot Over also offers a variety of family sundaes, soft serve, shakes, tumbleweeds, and gluten free desserts that accompany ice cream. All right, well, after the timeout by the Eagles as the play clock was getting near a delay a game. The second and goal from the six. 3.39 to go third quarter. Columbia City looking to reclaim the lead. There's the full house backfield. First time we've seen that here in the second half. And Bolt hands to Getz. Getz and gets nothing. Not even a line of scrimmage. There was nothing there. So now it's third down six. Maybe it's just time for Bolt to ram it in. Just got to be able to, to punch it in the end zone here. We, we, had, we had struggles with this last year, just getting anything inside the 10-yard line. Now we're here. We, yep. did it, we did it earlier in the first quarter. We have to execute here. Bolt takes the snap and going to run with it. And he's not going to get there. Down to the three, perhaps. As I'm not sure he was looking to throw. And here comes the field goal unit. Called it perfectly there, the, there though, Coach. Keeping it in Bolt's hands, but... I mean, like you said, it looked like he was looking to throw. He had a couple receivers out there. It's just it looks like he got caught up in traffic. He didn't really have enough room to throw, so he had to had to run it himself. So Kleficker on for a 20-yard field goal out of the hole of Colton Piper. And there's the snap, set, and the kick is good. So we have a tie game with uh, 9.32 gone here in the <coughs> third. We're even at 13. Here's Sean with some underwriters. Tonight's game feed is brought to you by Morsh's Builder Smart, located at 516 East Van Buren Street in Columbia City, with locations in Huntington, Wabash, Warsaw, and Goshen. Online at morshesbuildersmart.com, serving northeastern Indiana since 1871. This broadcast is brought to you by Bart's Car Store, selec selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. Bart's Car Store offers test drives, cash for trade-ins, and financing options. Bart's Car Store, serving Columbia City, Whitley County, and Fort Wayne. WJHS Radio is brought to you by Mike and Sons Satellite and TV Services. Mike and Sons is an authorized dish network and direct TV provider and is now offering eight bay antenna TV hookups from Channel Master. That's up to 40 local channels from South Bend all the way to Fort Wayne. WJHS postgame highlights and schedules are on Facebook. Give us a like and a follow. You can listen online just like the on-air broadcast. Just visit WJHS915.org. All right. Andrew Thompson, Sean Bledsoe for WJHS. 228 to go third quarter. We have a 13-13 tie. Coach Armstrong checking in tonight. And Ricky listening in the backyard in uh, suburban Fort Wayne. So Clevenger to kick. And a squibber. And they pick it up at the 23. Out across the 25-30, look out here, down the 40, and knocked out by Kleffiker again. The punter, or the kicker, making a tackle. I tell you, Kleffiker's got to have 10 tackles this year. Oh, for sure. So He's got to have the single season record for most tackles by a punter slash kicker, that's for sure. 43 yard, or check that, wait a minute, 43 yard line, I should say, is where they're going to take over. They went out of bounds. Somebody better get on a highlight video of all of Kleffiger's tackles and send it to Pat McAfee. Put it on Twitter. So, oh, I 
<laughs> so first and 10 at the 43. Decent field position for the Knights. So Razzle, the sophomore quarterback, back to work. And uh, they hand off, and here's Nichols. Nichols carries the pile for about three. 46 yard line, perhaps. 2.10, the clock runs here, third quarter at the stadium. Looked like Ryan Elston on the tackle there for the Eagles. Beautiful night for football. Glad you're with us. A lot of big crowd in the uh, stands out here. East Noble traveled well tonight. Their section almost full over there. Down to a minute 52 to go in the third, 13-13, and Brassel takes the snap, hands to Nichols again. Nichols shreds the defense, flag. First down and then some, we got a flag. Brock O'Hare on the tackle there for the Eagles. See what the Holding marker. East Noble. Yep. It's gonna say if the penalty was closer to the line of scrimmage. So a break there for Columbia City again. Otherwise that was a uh, 10 to 12 yard pickup. So spot of the foul, 10 yards. Looks like the spot of the foul, perhaps the 46. Oh, we're gonna decline it. Decline it, yeah. Oh, there were two penalties. Two holding penalties. Two holding calls, so it's gonna be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. 36 yard line. Second and 17, according to veteran PMA man, my copy, down here to our right. So second and 17, clock runs, a minute 35 to go in the third, 13-13. Brassel hands off to Nichols, cuts up the right side, breaks a couple tackles, gonna get back near the original line of scrimmage. Third and 10. That's yeah, just great blocking there by, by East Noble's offensive line, just being able to create that hole for Nichols. And then once Nichols gets, gets just a bit of open field, he's going to turn on the Jets. He's going to pick up some yardage, and he did just there. 1-10 to go. Third and 10 for the Knights. Big opportunity for the Eagle defense to stop. Nichols. Nichols cuts up field. No, and he gets near the first down. Holy smokes. He broke the pile. Down, he, I think he was brought down short. I think it's like a yard or two short. They'll go for it. Fourth and uh, one. 53 seconds to go in the half. And the Eagles scrambling to get personnel onto the field. Brazel fakes to Nichols. No, Nichols takes it. No, and he's tripped up. Turned over on downs. Brock here comes out of there. Very pumped. I'm assuming he was the one who got the shoestring tackle there. And uh, wow. Boy, I thought I thought we were a little discombobulated. We were running people on at the last second there. And that's surprising, but hey, credit to Uhair or whoever the heck was over there else otherwise. I think it was Uhair. I think he, he, he was able to trip uh, Nichols up by his shoe and uh, just tum just a tum just a tumble from there and Tuck down and turn over and downs. 13-13. Tight formation for Columbia City here and the lone receiver. And Bolt carries it right up the middle. Three so three yards, and that uh, could do it for the quarter. Yeah, but I think we're going to hurry up. Yeah, I think we're going to have one more play at least. So we've gone to this. Uh, we've seen the full house backfield one time uh, here in the half. Well, Bolt looking at the sidelines. We're down to 16. I think they're just going to let the quarter expire now. Everybody looking around. Yeah, the and we're going to take care of it. We're going to let it run down. There it is. There's the siren. Into three quarters here at the stadium. Your score, 13-13. In favor of, or no, in favor of nobody. It's <laughs> fair to Midland, even Steven. <laughs> it's a clean slate That's there. draw. <laughs> WGHS is brought to you in part by Indiana Physical Therapy, offering the highest credentialed therapists in the area, treating all walks of life from peewees to professionals to Olympians. With 18 locations in northern Indiana, including Fort Wayne, Angola, Auburn, Bluffton, Decatur, Elkhart, Goshen, Huntington, New Haven, and Warsaw. Indiana Physical Therapy is next to Oriental Buffet in Columbia City. Indiana Physical Therapy, online at indianapt.com. Tonight, 
Tonight's microphones are from the support of Flotec Plumbing and Heating, serving locally for 30 years. They offer furnace tune-ups and complete repair. More information is available at flotechpnh.com. Well, thanks to the underwriters. Thanks, everybody, for listening out there on the Internet tonight and uh, live radio. Sean Bledsoe and Andrew Thompson here. Everybody at the station, thank you. Mr. Glaza and his crew uh, doing some sideline stuff tonight, among other things. Fourth quarter about to commence, 13 apiece. Columbia City football. First and 10 at the East Noble 48, moving towards the north goal or right to left. And Bolt, step, fires, caught. Heron makes a move at the 40, 35, all the way down inside the 30 to the 28. Nice little slant pass. Yeah, it was a great route ran there by Heron. I mean, he probably went about five yards deep and then made a hard cut to the outside. He had nobody on him, clean throw for Bolt. Easy first down there for the Eagles. Chain gang, they run it. Chain gang's getting there. All right, here we go. Bolt first and 10 from the East Noble 28, up under center. Man in motion, Barrera and Seavers. Bobbles and wobbles ahead for a couple. Seavers has found, had uh, not found as much room as he did early on. No, and I think it's a majority, a majority of it is, I think they're keeping Seavers inside the hashes and they're attacking more to the inside. Um, I mean, in the first half, we saw Seavers go a bit more out to, to the sidelines. So uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, Coach Fox draws up, see if we can get Seavers out on the big gain again. So bowl up under center, 14 on the play clock, first and uh, 10, or second and eight, I should say. He throws the end zone, that's over everybody. That's in the parking lot almost, incomplete. I think he was pressured too. I think he had, think he had a couple of East Noble defensive linemen in his face. So third down and eight on the East Noble 26. Eagles need a big one here. And it was quick, pretty quick moving game tonight. We've had some long ones. We, we have had some long ones this year, that is for sure. So everybody getting their signal straight. Columbia City 12 on the play clock, 11.05 to go in the game. 13 apiece. East Noble and Columbia City and a hand up the middle and Seavers gets hit almost immediately. Gets in good couple. So, so fourth down and six. Big play here. Yeah, the blocking for, for Seavers on those inside runs just hasn't really been the best, not being no. able to create a hole. And it looks like Kleffiker will trot on to see if he can give the Eagles a lead here. 16 seconds on the play clock. 41 yard of field goal attempt. Garrett Kleffiker. 10 and a half to go. Hyper <laughs> to hold. And that one's got the distance. Good! Clefficker from 41. Columbia City 16, East Noble 13. What a kick there by Garrett Clefficker. He's got the leg. And I can't believe that they sent Zoman back there. They, they sent Zoman back in the end zone just to see if it was short, <laughs> if he was well, going to return it. But well, uh, we got, I mean, I think that's a pretty good strategy. Yeah, well, it's a good strategy for, for a team that doesn't have Garrett Clefficker. All right. Kid's got a cannon of a leg. Tonight's game stream is brought to you in part by ProFed Credit Union, providing our community with modern banking services with individual attention for personal accounts and businesses alike. ProFed Credit Union specializes in savings for goals, mortgages, car loans, and business banking too. ProFed Credit Union serves northern Indiana with a network of 37,000 plus ATMs and 12 branch locations. They are now in Columbia City, just off of US 30, near Walmart. We've had a good one here tonight. A little bit of a defensive uh, game. 16-13, Columbia City back in the lead. As they've had a little bit of a struggle at times on offense, but they've found enough to get the lead back with 10.22 to go. I think the biggest thing for us in these final 10 minutes is just, just being able to close out. If you remember back to week two when we played Delta, we had the lead going into the late part of the game, and we defensively we just kind of slipped, and offense kind of went into a bit of a stalemate. So got to finish this game out. So Clefficker to put it in the air. It'll be a long one, going to be fielded at the five. And across the 10, 15, 20, and... Oh, he's dragging a pile. Holy smokes, out to the 30. Let's see who was there on the tackle. That's Brock Uher. Another injured player. Nope. Reese Noble got him up. First and 10 at their own 30. Eagles had uh, hands on him at the 22. And 
he drug the pile for another eight yards. Yes, that's the that's kind of been the special thing about uh, East Noble's uh, special teams play tonight. They've been able to get relatively good field position for, from their returns. All right, 10-13 to go in the ball game. 16-13 Columbia City. First and ten at their own 29 for the Knights. And sophomore quarterback Brazel back to work out of the shotgun with three receivers. In motion goes Munson, and they pick up the ball, and they let him all. Oh, 40, look out! 45, midfield, 45, 40. And Eagles, oh, they lose him again. Now they get him down at the 35. Holy smokes. Tackled there by Easton Carnahan from behind. As Nichols bursts out of there for 35, look, 40 yards. Has a little misdirection, and everybody kind of rolled to the far side. And holy smokes, here's Nichols coming like a runaway freight train to the other side. So first and ten at the Eagle 45. And they give it to Nichols again. Nichols cuts up field on the left side. He's going to get five. Call it four. Second six. See, ever since they threw it, they threw in Nichols into that running back, posi back, back position, probably what mid first quarter when when their first running back fumbled, he's been uh, he's kind of been the uh, setting the offensive forte. Well, we haven't we haven't seen Carrico carry the ball for since the early stages after that turnover. So, all right, Brazel hands off this time and stifle. Uh, Carrico, there's Carrico, the aforementioned. Here he is. Look like uh, Mosier and Ryan Houston on the tackle there. An equipment issue for one of our guys. 75 coming off there. Uh, 79, Riley Tucker. Okay, so third and five at Columbia City, 38. 50 to go in the game. 16-13, Columbia City over East Noble. Brazel. In the shotgun. And they're going to look to the sidelines. 30 seconds on the play clock, plenty of time. So Brazel, and they do a little more shifting. Eight and a half to go flag on the play. And, yep, it's going to be on East Noble. Yeah, false start. There it is, false start on the Knights. So this is going to make it third down 10. So you're going back to the 36-yard line. 36-yard line. <laughs> Jaylee Morrison checking into the broadcast All with right. my classmates. She's asking what razzle means, coach. <laughs> That's his name, isn't it? Brazzle. <laughs> razzle. Razzle. Razzle-dazzle? I don't know. Maybe I called him Razzle. I think he said razzle-dazzle. Razzle All right, Brazzle. He razzle-dazzles. <laughs> Brazzle out of the shotgun, and now they're looking to the sideline for uh, the play again. Brazzle on third and 10 at the Eagle 35, has time. Brazzle looking, cuts up field, and Eagles eat him up. Got it, maybe a yard. Fourth down 10. Brody Barker and Ian Clifford there on the tackle together. As uh, Eagles close the gap in a hurry on Brazzle. Fourth and ten. And it looks like Brazel's going to stay on the field. Well, I think I don't think they have a kicking game like we do in that distance. Brazel on fourth and ten. 8:01 to go. He's on the run to the near side. Fires. Overshot his man incomplete. In intended receiver, I think, was Zolman. Zolman. There. Yeah. And he had him. Zolman extended, but it went a little too high, and that turns it over on downs to Columbia City with 7:56 to go. And you know, Sean. You brought up the Delta game earlier, and, and the score is obviously a little different than the second week of the season, but we have the, kind of the same scenario setting up as you talked about a little bit ago. We do. We, we have a chance now. We, we have a chance to close to out this game, and we just have to execute. We have to make sure that we take care of the football. We don't, we don't allow any turnovers, and we make sure that we take care of the penalties, make sure that there's nothing yep. that's going to keep us back from getting those first downs. Still a long way to go, but again, the same scenario as a few weeks ago against Delta. The Eagles lost that one, 14-10 late. Bolt, flag on the play. And Hold your cards. False start there. False start on Columbia City. Holy crow. It, this was 
This was kind of the start against Delta. It's just penalties, so we have to manage. Got to control what we can control. First and 15 for Columbia City. At back to their 30 yard line. First and 15. And here we go, Bolt. And tripped up, loss on the play. Is, uh, is that Barrera? Yeah, Barrera. It's who Bolt handed off to. Okay. So that's going to bring up second and 16. 7.35 to go in the ball game. 16-13 Columbia City. Need to move the chains. 16 on the play clock. Columbia City in the huddle. As it looks like Stratton Fuller will be the sole receiver on the far side. Bolt with six on the play clock. Takes the snap. Fakes. He's rolling the far side. Running out of room. Look out. Throws it. And he gets hit out of bounds. Or close to out of bounds, I guess. Gets not. He overthrew four. So that's going to bring up third and 16. Eagles have themselves uh, not in the best of predicaments here. 7.08 to go. The clock stop. Columbia City by three. So they're on the 29-yard line. Columbia City sets it up third and 16. Need a big play here. They got two receivers. He got four, and I believe that's Here, Shear. Yeah, Shear. And Bolt fakes. Bolt back. Oh, he's on the hot seat. Gets away from a man. Runs. And gets knocked down. And going to get about three or four yards, and that's going to be fourth down and 12. He had gets wide open at midfield. Just wasn't looking his way. As people, as he was being chased by a bunch of white jerseys. So fourth and 12. Here comes Kleficker. Holy smokes. Kleffiger stands at his 20. Return man Munson at his 35, drifting him backwards a little. 13 on the play clock, 6.32 to go. Wobbly snap. Kleffiger gets it out of there. Not one of his better ones, but it's going to take a Columbia City bounce. And uh, it's going to go down to the 21-yard line. So Eagle defense put on the spot again. Is the offense struggling a little bit? 6.21 to go. Tonight's game score updates on WJHS are brought to you by Moo Over Ice Cream Shop, building flavors from scratch. Moo Over offers ice cream flavors including sunny chocolate nut free, strawberry jam, rocky road, and custom candied pecan. Moo Over also offers a variety of family sundaes, soft serves, shakes, tumbleweeds, and gluten-free desserts that accompany ice cream. Moo Over is a plant-based ice cream shop that that is tailored to those who either have a sensitivity to dairy, allergens, or taking a more healthy approach to eating. Move over ice cream shop located right across from the furniture store in downtown Columbia City. All right, Brazel back to work. They got three receivers to the far side. They make a move there and shift. Brazel takes it, hands off. Here comes Nichols around the left side. Nichols, and they're going to get him this time after a gain of two. He pretty much ran into a sea of black jerseys there. So that's going to be Carnahan, the tackle, out to the 25-yard line. Second and seven, gain of three for Nichols. Six minutes to go. 16-13, Columbia City. And uh, Brazel takes the snap, throws, caught, first down. Easy first down, and more. Out to the 39. Receiver there Zolman. was Zolman. Yeah. Zolman. Yep. Move the chains, first and 10. As the chain gang uh, gets it going. All right, here we go. First and 10 at the Snowball 49. I got three receivers. And they look for the uh, play at the sidelines. 15 on the play clock. And Brazel pitches wide. And with a head of steam, look out up the sidelines. Cut back. Oh my, 40, 35, 30. And oh, they let him off the hook. He spins and down to the 21 yard line. No flags. Who was that? Was that Nichols again? Uh, it was Nichols again. And we have an injured eagle. It's Ryan Elston who's limping on his, on his ankle there. Down to the 22 as that was uh, 
40, how many yards? Oh, that was a 38, so that's gonna be mm, 44 yard pickup. Holy smokes. East Noble now down to the 22 yard line. First and 10 injury timeout for Columbia City. Tonight's game feed is brought to you by Morsh's Builder Smart, located at 516 East Van Buren Street in Columbia City, with locations in Huntington, Wabash, Warsaw, and Goshen. Online at morshesbuildersmart.com, serving northeastern Indiana since 1871. This broadcast is brought to you by Bart's Car Store, selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. Bart's Car Store offers test drives, cash for trade-ins, and financing options. Bart's Car Store, serving Columbia City, Whitley County, and Fort Wayne. WJHS Radio is also brought to you by Mike & Sons Satellite and TV Services. Mike & Sons is an authorized dish network and direct TV provider and is now offering eight bay antenna TV hookups from Channel Master. That's up to 40 local channels from South Bend all the way to Fort Wayne. Now well, Elson comes off under his own power, still limping a bit. So 5.17 to go, 16-13 Eagles. East Noble with a huge run there. And at the Columbia City 22. 22 yard line. So now. And they're going to roll the clock. So Brazel. He's got his three receivers again. Brazel looking, looking, and hurls it in the corner. Almost intercepted. Oh, they're going to throw a flag. That has to be offensive, I would think. Penalty marker on the play. Wow. Columbia City. And that is Heron. against oh, yeah. Heron, yeah. He's pleading his case to no avail, so that's going to be. So he's, yeah, he's still wondering. We're waiting to intercept the ball, a guy runs into us. So that's offensive fashion. Well, yeah, I mean, it looked like Heron was going to in position to pick Yeah, it. I mean, he was relatively flat-footed. It's not, I mean, he stuck out his. You thought he pushed him off first? Well, now Coach Fox wants an explanation. So East Noble in prime position now at the 11-yard line. 5 to go in this game. We're waiting what the officials call it. That is big for both Columbia City. I mean, discussing it with Coach Fox and. Well, he's just giving an explanation. And yeah, they're finally walking it off. Yep. And the Columbia City fans get a little irate. The Boo Birds come out below us. So first and 10 at the 11. Columbia City defense needs to come up big here. Has Brazel out of the shotgun, first and 10 at the 11. They're going to change their play. 5.05 to go. And they give it to Nichols. Nichols around left side, wall of blockers. He's going to get to the six, seven maybe. Look like Mosier there on the tackle for the Eagles. Officials time, another equipment issue. Yeah, and it's Riley Tucker yet again. His helmet came off. Something must have snapped on it. Yeah, that's twice now. All on the seven yard line. So now at the seven yard line, second, and they can still get a first down. Now what are they doing? Okay. Okay, clock runs, 4.50 to go. At the seven. Ball on the seven, East Noble looking to the sidelines for a play, 4.40 to go, Columbia City 16, East Noble 13, and they pitch it wide, look out, here's Nichols, touchdown, East Noble. Yep, touchdown. I think, did they signal it? Yeah, they did. They did signal it. Yep, it was a great move to the outside there by Nichols. He had great blocking. He had, I think he had one of the receivers and a tight end out there that led the way for him and uh, relatively smooth and easy path into the end zone. Yeah, he really didn't have much impedance there. Blockers did a good job. So Nichols from seven yards puts the East Noble Knights back in the lead. 19-16, Klein to kick. This is a big uh, extra point here. 
And it's Santi Pablo. Oh, yeah. Well, and the Eagles, they got him. And they bottle the snap, so that's big. That keeps Eagles within a field goal. With 4.33 to go. So PAT, the snap fumbled. Underwriters for Sean. WJHS is brought to you in part by Indiana Physical Therapy, offering the highest credentialed therapists in the area, treating all walks of life from Pee Wees to professionals to Olympians, with 18 locations in northern Indiana, including Fort Wayne, Angola, Auburn, Bluffton, Decatur, Elkhart, Goshen, Huntington, New Haven, and Warsaw. Indiana Physical Therapy is next to Oriental Buffet in Columbia City. Indiana Physical Therapy, online at indianapt.com. Science microphones are from the support of Flotec Plumbing and Heating, serving locally for 30 years. They offer furnace tune-ups and complete repair. More information is available at flotechpnh.com. Well, Columbia City with 4.33 to go. Trails it by three now. As uh, it's been four Garrett Clefficker field goals. And check that, uh, seven, three Garrett Kleffiker field goals and a touchdown and a PAT tonight. Nice Noble back in the lead. And uh, this has been a dandy, mostly defense. Yeah, mostly the game, and uh, we'll see how how the Eagles offense can respond to it. East Noble's defense has held them pretty, pretty strong in this fourth quarter, so. East Noble's gotten a couple of big ones, big plays. Ours have been a little more, well, the one drive was a sustained drive. So Klein to kick, and gonna be long into the corner, gonna bounce, and picked up at the 10. Gets 15, 20, 25, 30. He's got a couple men to beat, and midfield, midfield, 45 yard line, gets all the way back to the East Noble 45. Is he, he okay? Uh, that that's the question. Yeah, he took a massive hit from, from behind, knocked all the wind out, but he's up. up. Yeah. So Getz turns on the burners. So position inside East Noble territory. No flags. Boy, a couple more moves, he could have been gone. He, yeah, he, he only had really two men, the only two men kind of working with him, and the one directly behind him. Had some pretty good closing speed and was able to tackle Getz. He's able to save the touchdown, that's for sure. First and 10 at the East Noble 45, 424 to go. Bolt and company back to work. Time to get this offense off the schneid and get a touchdown, boys. So up under center, Bolt. Hands off. And is that? Seavers. Seavers for a yard, half yard. Boy, we are getting nothing up the middle this, uh, this half. You gotta move Seavers to the outside. You gotta be able to trust your blockers on the edge so that Seavers can turn that corner and get to the sideline. So gain of a half a yard, second and nine. Columbia City gonna huddle. Four minutes to go, 20 seconds on the play clock. Bolt gets the play into the huddle. 16, or 1916, East Noble over Columbia City. It's been a dandy. So Bolt, up under center, 345 to go. He steps back, fires. It blocked right at the line of scrimmage, the throw. Yeah, it was batted down by Kenan Carrico. So third and nine. So the offense sputtering a little bit here. I think you're in four down territory now. Got to get, got to get it here. You've got three timeouts, or no, two timeouts. So we had to take one when the play clock got down. So third and nine, two receivers coming in here, side bolt. Takes the snap, rolls to the far side, and look out! And he sidesteps the man, Bolt goes the other way! He's gonna run, and he's tripped up! Oh, up the middle and barely across the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and he had the outside, he had the far side completely wide open. He chose to make a move towards the middle, and it was, it was the wrong move. East Noble injury. So now it's fourth and a bunch, 10. Pull hunt all day up that right side. Not sure if he had someone to, if he saw something, uh, uh, some faint white out of his right side, I'm not sure what it was, but it deterred him from going to the outside. So I think uh, we'll probably be going for it on fourth and 10 with 3.33 to go. I mean, you got two timeouts and a punt would have to be perfectly placed. So Columbia City 
down to perhaps this play. Tonight's game stream, game stream is brought to you in part by ProFed Credit Union, providing our community with modern banking services with individual attention for personal accounts and businesses alike. ProFed Credit Union spe specializes in savings for goals, mortgages, car loans, and business banking too. ProFed Credit Union serves northern Indiana with a network of 37,000 plus ATMs and 12 branch locations. They are now in Columbia City, just off of US 30 near Walmart. Tonight's game score updates on WJHS are brought to you by Moo Over Ice Cream Shop. Building flavors from scratch, Moo Over offers ice cream flavors including sunny, sunny chocolate nut free, uh, strawberry jam, Rocky Road, and custom candied pecan. Moo Over also offers a variety of family sundaes, soft serves, shakes, tumbleweeds, and gluten-free desserts that accompany ice cream. Moo Over is a plant-based ice cream shop tailored to those who have either a sensitivity to dairy, allergens, or are taking a more healthy approach to eating. Moo Over Ice Cream Shop, located right across from the furniture store in downtown Columbia City. WJHS post-game highlights and schedules are on Facebook. Give us a like and a follow. You can listen online, just like the on-air broadcast. Just visit WJHS915.org. So, they get the snowball... As that's uh, 22, Carrico, he's being helped off. Eagles face fourth and 10, 3.33 to go. They have two timeouts. They trail it 19-16. 3.33 to go. Eagles need a big one here. This has been a good one, but uh, if you're an Eagle fan, uh, offense has struggled. All right, here we go, bunch stop formation. We have one receiver. We got that tight formation and Bolt. And they're going to give it to Bolt. And Razzle Dazzle and Bolt. Short. Penalty marker on the play. So crazy. Like the lights. Penalty marker on the play. That was an old trick play. And there's a penalty marker on the field. There's a flag. When you see yellow. And. As uh, Knight or uh, Bolt pitched it to somebody or threw it, I don't know who the Piper, and then he threw it back to Bolt, and then Bolt tried to uh, run up the uh, run up the way, and he only got to what? He only got was well, four yards short, I think. So from own 40 yard line, it's East Noble, and they're the driver's seat for sure now. Two Columbia City timeouts. And of course, East Noble uh, beat us twice last year. And right now, they're in a position to do it again, barring a turnover. As East Noble's offense will take the field here. So, Brazel, mm. you can probably see him put it on the ground now. Man in motion, and they fake, and the reverse, and oh my, broken tackles out near the first down, midfield, just short of it. Nick Munson, Munson. yeah. Nelson's back out there after his ankle problem, so second down one. Three minutes to go, 1916 East Noble. And uh, second one at the 49, down to 250. And they're going to double check the play there. Play clock down to six, 238 in the game. They hand it off to Nichols and Eagles. Yeah, they let him slip ahead for the first down. That'll stop the clock temporarily with two and a half to go. Defense has got to be able to force something to happen, got to be able to either hold them on this set of downs or force some some turnover, just got to be able to, uh, to make something happen here. Brazel's in the gun here. Brazel. It's gonna take a sweet time. And there's a penalty marker here. False start. False start on the Knights. And that's gonna make things a bit, hopefully a bit more manageable yeah. for this Columbia City defense. It'll be first and 15 
Ball on the East Noble 46. Actually, I was off by a year. It was 2010 was the last time Columbia City beat East Noble. Off by a year. All right, Brazel. First and 15 on the 46, their own 46. Under two minutes to go and penalty again. False there start East Noble. False start again. So two straight false starts on East Noble. Clock down to 157. And you would think that this, this has got to be the moment for the Eagles to, First and 20. to make a stop. Need it right here. It has to happen on this set of downs. First down and 20, a minute 57 to go. Columbia City still with two timeouts. Brazel takes the snap, hands off, and, and a couple slip tackles. We get about three yards. Timeout, Columbia City. Brody Barker there with the tackle. Second down, 17. 157 to go. <laughs> and I think there's some confusion as to who called the timeout. Game clock didn't move. And they want three seconds off the clock. Three seconds off. Off, yeah. 154. So it apparently was a Columbia City timeout. I yes. I think. I would. Yep. So it's now second and 17. And it's at the 44 yard line. Everybody's biting their fingernails. Now what? Mike and Stan are already biting their toenails. <laughs> Here comes a referee over. What's he doing? Timeout. Columbia City. Okay, so. There's the signal. Yep. So they got that uh, decided. 154 to go, 19-16 in favor of East Noble. Tonight's game feed is brought to you by Morsh's Builders Mart, located at 516 East Van Buren Street in Columbia City, with locations in Huntington, Wabash, Warsaw, and Goshen. Online at morshesbuildersmart.com, serving northeastern Indiana since 1871. This broadcast is also brought to you by Bart's Car Store, selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. Bart's Car Store offers test drives, cash for trade-ins, and financing options. Bart's Car Store, serving Columbia City, Whitley County, and Fort Wayne. WJHS Radio is also brought to you in part by Mike and Sons Satellite TV Services. Mike and Sons is an authorized DISH network and direct TV provider and is now offering an 8-bay antenna TV hookup from Channel Master. That's up to 40 local channels from South Bend all the way to Fort Wayne. With 30 years of service experience, Mike is here locally, hands-on for every customer. Mike and Sons is available on the phone at 260-213-3251. They're also on Facebook and online at MikeAndSonsSatellite.com. Well, down to minute 54, Columbia City with one timeout left. East Noble facing second and 17 at their own 44. As East Noble looks for their 11th straight victory over Columbia City. Then again, the last win for Columbia City in the 2010 campaign, a 56-55 overtime decision up in Kendallville. Yeah, Kissinger, you probably do. You were probably in school, weren't you? You played in that classic. Yeah, the man sitting beside me. All right, East Noble, second and 17. Minute 54 to go. Flag on the play. It's a good false start. Another false start, yeah. False start. Uh, nice. And Coach Lou Gamstutz is not happy as he's pleading yeah. his case with the Mitchell side Mitchell. judge over there. <laughs> Kissinger, oh my gosh. Is that a Coke he's drinking? <laughs> and, and fittingly so, Coach. Is that a Coke? Okay. Yeah, fittingly All right. so. That's my drink. <laughs> All right, second 22, ball back to the 39-yard line now, 154. So no clock, no time elapsed. So here's East Noble, second 22. Columbia City still with the one timeout. And they give the handoff up the middle, and the Eagles stifle that. 
And there's the final Columbia City timeout with 1.48 to go. Third down and what? 21 maybe? They're down 20. WJHS is brought to you in part by Indiana Physical Therapy, offering the highest credentialed therapists in the area, treating all walks of life, from peewees to professionals to Olympians. With 18 locations in northern Indiana, including Fort Wayne, Angola, Auburn, Bluffton, Decatur, Elkhart, Goshen, Huntington, New Haven, and Warsaw, Indiana Physical Therapy is next to Oriental Buffet in Columbia City. Indiana Physical Therapy, online at indianapt.com. Tonight's microphones are from the support of FlowTech Plumbing and Heating, serving locally for 30 years. They offer furnace tune-ups and complete repair. More information is available at flowtechpnh.com. So, third and 20 for East Noble. No timeouts for Columbia City now. So they can essentially mm, got to run a couple plays and use their 40-second clock. Ooh, that puts us down in the teens for seconds left. We could potentially get the ball back. That one time out looming large now where we had some confusion and let the play clock run down. So here's East Noble, third and 20. And they hand it off to Nichols and into the pile. And oh, oh boy, he got away. Gets up near the original line of scrimmage out the midfield. But no timeouts for the Eagles up to the 50. It's going to be fourth down 10. So, yeah, this will take it down to near a minute. Play clock and game clock, about a second differential. So East Noble. It looks like they're going to get their offense on the field, too. So this is fourth and 11. I think we're going to stay there and then call a timeout. Yeah, they'll call a timeout here. Yeah, they're going to call timeout. Yep. <laughs> Quarterback clapped his hands, tried to throw Columbia City off a little bit. But uh, so fourth and 11 and 59 seconds to go. So Fuller's going to go back. Or if there was ever a time for a run back. <laughs> <laughs> we can use it right about now. Tonight's game stream is brought to you in part by ProFed Credit Union, providing our community with modern banking services with individual attention for personal accounts and businesses alike. ProFed Credit Union specializes in savings for goals, mortgages, car loans, and business banking too. ProFed Credit Union serves northern Indiana with a network of 37,000 plus ATMs and 12 branch locations. They are now in Columbia City, just off of US 30 near Walmart. So, timeout, East Noble, and they will apparently punt, which I would imagine. East Noble comes in at 3-2 and two tonight. Of course, they lost a game with Northwood due to quarantine shutdown. So, they're 3-2, and two, Columbia City 4-2. and two. So, we have Fuller back. Zolman to kick, or punt, I should say. And high snap. Zolman gets it away, and it's, oh, it's going to take an East Noble, and it goes into the end zone. Break for the Eagles there. Yeah, huge break. If that would have, that would have stopped right around the, the goal line, that that would have spelled trouble. But getting getting the ball at the twenty, that's that's much. huge. It's, it's huge. Fifty one seconds, no timeouts with which to work. So the middle of the field probably out of the question. Probably going to be a lot of sideline throws, I would imagine, coming from Bolt. Definitely going to be using Shear, uh, Heron, Fuller, Getz to the best of their ability. Well, we'll see what we come out with here. 80 yards away from pay dirt. So we got two receivers to the far side. I cannot tell for the life of me who they are. Bolt. Takes the snap, rolls to the far side, going to reverse it. Bolt on the hot seat, running out of the uh, way. Oh, and Columbia City drops it. They had a first down. It was four. He would have been tackled in bounds. A lead of rock in the back on the Eagles. So that's going to take it back to the 10. 
It's a costly penalty. That's something that well, that, five yard line spot of the foul. Or no. <laughs> See, that's just. No, it's, um, yep. Yeah, going back to the five. Down to the five. See, that's just something that, that we were talking about earlier, Coach. You gotta take care of the penalties and you gotta take care of the ball and the penalties are what killing, uh, they're what killing us right now. Well, both uh, had to get rid of that. And he was being chased by an armada of white jerseys. 44 seconds, first and a bunch, 44 seconds. Bolt at his five, Bolt drops back. Bolt comes to the near side and gotta throw it. Finds a man, caught! And got out of bounds. That was Shear. Shear. They're out to the 28-yard line. And that gets us out of the shadow of the end zone. Nichols the stop. Is that a first down? Uh, I don't think they're moving the chains. Check. No, they're short. Be third and about a yard. Third and about a yard. That's irrelevant. We've got a second in the yard. The bunched up formation. Play clock's down to six. That's not right. You gotta snap it, yep. Bolt fakes, look out, they're after him. And he gets away, Bolt on a hot seat, gotta get out of bounds, and he does. Wow. With 20 and 27 seconds. If there's he something, got the first down, but boy, he almost got drilled. If there's something that Greg Bolt can get us, can give us, it's most certainly a heart attack. I definitely thought he was going down with the yeah. way that uh, that he hunched over. He's a strong man to take down. Okay, so first down ball at the uh, 36 of Columbia City Bolt. 27 seconds. Look out there after him again. Side steps a man, throws it deep, and yeah, knocked away. Good defense there. That stops the clock. We can get reset here on second down. Intended receiving there was Hunter Heron on the far sideline. Time for the hook and ladder. And realistically, all they're really thinking about is trying to get into a decent field goal range for Clefficker to try to, try to tie the game. 20 seconds. We have it on our own 37. 